Hello? Can you hear me? I hope you can hear me. Because I'm checking my mic. I need a heads up that you guys, you guys can all hear me. I need just a thumbs up. I need a something in the chat saying, hey, Corbin, we can hear you. Here, I'll turn this down for you. Someone let me know I'm live. And then we'll be good to go. <clears throat> ah, looks like you can hear me. What is going on? Hello, 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 hello. Man, chat. What's going on, Max? What's up, Liam? I'm hyped. I'm hyped. First live stream of 2022. I'm excited. What's going on, Robbie? Jonathan sniped me going through Twitter, trying to plug the socials and whatnot. <laughs> but yeah, what's going on, everybody? I'm trying to see who else is in here, so I don't think... Uh... So I don't miss anybody. Milan, Mason, Karan. What's good? What's good? What's good? We got a, we got a lot, Braden. What's, we, got a, we, got a, we got a lot to talk about tonight, chat. What's up, Cody? Um, man, we got, uh, we, we got, I mean, we'll, we could, we'll start with whatever you guys want to start with. So if you guys want to start with good stuff, bad stuff, what do you guys want to start with? Cause we could start with talking about the, the, um, we started talking about the Rafael Devers stuff. We could start about talking about, uh, we can start by talking about Trevor's story. We, we're going to get, we're, what we're going to do in this live stream, I think the big portion of this live stream is going to be, um, it's going to be Trevor's story talk and middle infielders and stuff like that. So, it's up, very rare. First of, yeah, uh, you, you know what I meant. First of, first of uh, 2023. First live stream of 2023. And this is a big one. This is a big one. Yeah, it looks like, Looks like most people want to. Looks like most people want to start with Trevor's story, which makes sense. I figured. Who will be his replacement? Stuff like that. Yeah, I figured this is this is what we'd be talking about. Man, what's going on right now? Our power went out, Chad. Just a heads up. It might be a little bit. Amen. What's going on? You made it in here a little bit early. Thank you, Cody. I appreciate that for the four thousand subscribers. Yeah, that was such an, an incredible, incredible time. What is going on right now? Hold on, chat. I'm I'm trying to I got anyways, the power went out here about a probably about an hour ago. So the Wi-Fi's been a little bit funky since it's come back. Um and it looks like it's being a little funky right now. So if if it's a little laggy, I apologize if if, if you know. Man, yeah. This is not good. How bad is it for you guys? Is it bad for you guys? I'm trying to think. Is there stuff I can close to make it work a little bit better? What's up, yo gamer? Welcome in, my man. Can't wait for that tattoo. I'm kind of nervous. You guys are actually gonna get me to <laughs> five thousand. I'm actually gonna have to get a tattoo. It was a joke. It. It was a joke. At uh, it was a joke at like four hundred subscribers, but. Okay, you're good. Okay, cause it's it's yeah it's it's messing around right now with me. So, all right. Anyways, let's get into let's get into talking about um yeah it's the camera. I know, I know it's the camera. My Wi-Fi is in spring training mode. Yeah, that's gonna be that is gonna be wildly frustrating. Chat. I might have to. We might have to shut this down and restart it someplace else. Uh, man, what the heck? When did this happen? This is this is new. Usually it's really good. Usually usually there's no problem with the Wi Fi. Maybe Huh. Mid February at the latest. God, it's looking like it, honestly. All right, so we'll start talking, Chad. If it gets if it gets really bad, it's like unbearable. Just let me know. It's kind of going in and out here, so just let me know if it if it's really that bad. Um, 
But either way, we need to figure out right now a couple of things, right? So let's start by talking about Trevor's story. Let's start by talking about, you know, sort of what his situation's looking like, what it's going, what's going to happen with the Red Sox, and some solutions because that's by far and away the biggest news. And we can talk about Rafi. We can be all happy at the end of the stream. But let's get the let's get the Trevor story news out of the way first. Um. So what do you guys think about it? Genuinely, I, I mean, obviously it's really bad. Like this is a problem. But what do you guys think about this Trevor Story stuff? Because, ah, man, it just it puts the Red Sox in such a bad situation. Hey, appreciate it, Ryan. Thank you for stopping by, man. Um, it just it, it puts the Red Sox in such a bad situation because not only did the Red Sox already need a middle infielder, right? And you probably could have gotten away with either signing an outfielder or or, or trading for an outfielder or getting a or getting a second baseman, right? Trading somehow. And you had a little bit of leverage, right? You you built up this good farm system. You, you, you were in a decent place, right? You just locked up Rafi Devers. It looked like you were wanting to compete. And so you were in a decent place for a trade. Now, the problem is, is, is even if you go for, say, even if you go for, say, a starting pitcher, teams know. Teams know that you the Red Sox are in a bad spot. And that's the problem, right? Uh, that That's the biggest problem is trading right now just became almost impossible. I don't know if you guys have seen this. We're going to, we're going to talk about this a lot, but one of our, one of our good sub, uh, one of our good subs on this channel, um, one of the, one of the you know main subs on this channel is a has a little bit of MLB insider. We'll talk about the Iglesias stuff first, but I want to. That's a funny gift, by the way, on the bottom of that. I wanted to talk about this first. Okay. So here's what I'm talking about when I say it just made trading for a shortstop next to impossible. We're looking at the Red Sox were pursuing the Padres Hassan Kim for a potential stopgap infield position, which I think most of us can agree is a fantastic, fantastic solution, right? He's above average uh, offensively. He's very good defensively. But the Padres want Hauk and three others. Three others. Not just one other, right? Because we did this, la we did this what, two weeks ago when we talked about Ha-Sung Kim. We talked about the value of Hauk and the value of Kim are almost identical, and it matches each team's need. It felt like the perfect fit. Now, other teams are realizing, well, well, crap, the Red Sox need to put someone on the field, right? If they're kind of going to come for Kim, we're going to ask for the world because they really, really need the shortstop. And that's just sort of how it's going to go. And this is probably what it's going to look like when you try to, when you try to trade for a shortstop at this point. That's my, that, that's the biggest impact that Trevor Story is going to have on this offseason. Now, obviously it's going to make this regular season really, really bad. Um, you know, because because Trevor Story was your protection for Rafael Devers. Now I don't know who protects Devers, you know. Genuinely, I, I, I don't know. So this this right here is a perfect example of what I was talking about when I, when I said last week that it's going to be hard for the Red Sox to sign, to trade for any so, sort of middle infielder. And it just got worse with the Trevor Story news. Now there is, chat, there is this. Don't mind this. This is hilarious, but don't mind this. Boston Red Sox considering signing Jose Iglesias to play shortstop while he recovers from surgery, which I feel like most of us saw coming. I feel like most of us figured out, right? What do we got? What do we got in the comments here right now? Three others could mean anything, though. Then we don't know what kind of players they are talking about. I have a good idea of what kind of players they're talking about. Now, I don't know the exact specifics, but I know it's not like Duran, Dahlbeck, Siebold, right? They're, they're asking for, for three decent prospects in return. Some people with decent value. And that's a, that's a lot to give up to... to place it on a team that for for a team that you know realistically without Trevor's story 
and, and with so many questions in the bullpen, or sorry, in the rotation, uh, to begin with, was going to be a winning team, but maybe not. They could still win. They could have an 85 win, 86, 90 win season and still end up in fourth or fifth place in the division. That's just sort of why, where we're at right now. Was tra- signing Trevor's story worth it? Um, yeah, I would say, I, you know, I, w- I still say yes, signing Trevor's story is worth it. I, I think... He was going to get this surgery. The, the timing of the surgery is miserable. If they, it, this, My problem is if they knew about this for a while, and if Trevor Story knew about this for a while, what he should have done is just gotten the surgery. Just gotten the surgery out of the way in October, November. That way he's good for spring training at the very latest, April, right? So, I, yeah, I think, I think once he comes back, has a good rest of the 2023 season has a good 2024 i think it could be worth it he's probably gonna opt out at some point here um because he, he does have that opt out for 2025 but uh, you know i still say it's worth it. it it's starting to it's starting to not look like a great signing though i'll, I'll say that why trade was story gonna be the key in making a deep run to the playoffs i don't think so um well, you know, I think, again, this team, if everything went right, was going to be a, a good winning ball club. Um, I, I do. I think they would have been a winning ball club. Everything would have gone if everything went right, but it just didn't. Um, so, so, yeah, I think Trevor's story puts a real damper on being competitive this year. That's a problem. Sign Adam Duvall, had a down year. But his once, yeah, you know, I saw that, Amen. Um, I did. What's up, Heim? I'm in the chat. What's going on? Um, yeah, I, you know, I wouldn't hate Adam Duvall. At least defensively, he's pretty good. But you just the problem with Adam Duvall is you can't play him every day because then you're gonna have to be fighting Turner for DH, or you're gonna be fighting Doogie or Yoshida. They already want Yoshida to play some DH, so that's gonna be a problem. It's just, yeah, I, you know, I, I, if you're going to trade Verdugo for starting pitching or something like that, maybe, yeah, I would love, I would love Adam Duvall, but I, you know, I don't know where he fits in with this team. That's the problem. I was into the Hauk trade idea upon first thought, but then we have two broken men in our rotation. So I don't know, maybe we're throwing in our backup stars out the window. Maybe, but you know, how in my opinion was more, way more deadly as a late inning reliever um, doesn't seem like, doesn't seem like, you know, he'd be super beneficial as a starter. I think even the Red Sox think he's a more beneficial as a reliever. So I don't know. I'd go Nico Goodrum, David Hamilton, Christian Koss, Emmanuel Valdez, Matthew Lugo or Sedane Raphael. I, I think Raphael is still off. I, I think he needs to do triple A before he goes to double A. At the very least, he's another season, a half season at least in double A to try and iron out some of his swing mechanics here. Not even mechanics, swing approach would be a better way of putting it. David Hamilton, not very good at the plate. Nico Goodrum has been terrible lately. The only one who'd be mildly interesting, Robert, would be Emmanuel Valdez. But even then, you know, I'm not really sure. Uh, what do we got? Trade Xander for prospects. Hello, Eric. You know, Eric, I kind of, I kind of figured that would stop. <laughs> I kind of figured that would stop once he left. Luke Voigt. Yeah, that's another guy. I just don't know where he'd fit in with this team. That's the problem. Um, do I prefer Profar and Andrus or Andrus, Andrus and Iglesias? I would go Andrus and Iglesias. I don't, I, you know, based on what Profar has done the last couple of seasons, He's been decent at the plate, I guess, but um, he's not as utility. He's not as big of a utility guy as he once was. He played a lot of right field for the Padres, and he played decent first base at one point. But that's about it. I would go Andrus and uh, Iglesias. I think if everything goes right with our starters, our pitching would care could still carry us to the playoffs. Yeah, I mean, if we get if we get you know really good Chris Sale, and we get decent James Paxson, I think yeah. 
Yeah, I, I think it could be a really good rotation. The problem is you, you just don't know. You really just don't know. To be honest, we'll be lucky if we get you could you could quite literally put a triple A team out there. I think they'd get forty wins. That is such a low ball. Sign Bauer. I am all set on signing Bauer. Um, Justin Turner, our starting second baseman right now, looking like a Royo, honestly. Oh, that's another thing, Chad. We got to talk about that. Um, do I have that pulled up anywhere? I don't have it pulled up. Let me see if I can find it. Hold on, Chad. We got something to talk about too. Let me see if I can. Um... Hold on. I'm looking for I'm looking for something um Yeah, okay. This is what I was trying to look for. This is what Alex Cora said about the the sort of um This is what Alex Cora said about what, what's going on with with the you know, middle infield right now. Um some updates from Alex Cora. They're talking now whether Kike Hernandez might fit at shortstop instead of center field depends on who they can add. Duran will play for Mexico. Yeah, those two, yada, 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 right? So right now it's looking like the Red Sox plan is to have Kike Hernandez at shortstop. Obviously that can change completely, but that's sort of where it's at. I'm still wondering about Waka. I just, I don't know if Waka, like Waka kind of did got lucky last season, honestly. Which is which is making me a little bit nervous that he hasn't signed. With such a, with, with such sort of a, really intense starting pitching market this year. The fact that he has not signed probably means that teams find something within him where they don't like. Maybe it's a maybe it's an injury, maybe it's a, you know, a statistic, an advanced statistic that they didn't like. If you take a look at his baseball savant page here, let it load. I mean, that's a lot of blue, man. That is a lot of blue. So that's another thing too to keep an eye on as as to why um as to why maybe Michael Walker hasn't been brought back yet. Um are you excited for Winter Weekend? That is my lovely girlfriend. I want to say hello to Jess A. Kaz. Uh yeah, so we'll be at Winter Weekend, me and my girlfriend. If you guys want to come say hi, feel free. But we will be there. Very excited about it. Granky, um, Granky, I just don't see his personality fitting in with this Red Sox crowd. Does that make sense? Red Sox should trade for Javi Baez. We talked about that last time. The The question is, I mean, obviously Javi's fairly decent. Um, Obviously Javi's fairly decent defensively. The question is whether or not he'll be able to bounce back at all offensively. And that's the biggest issue I have. What is going on right now? Man. Everything is just slow. This window just completely quit out on me. We'll go back to this. Um, yeah, so with Javi Baez, he was terrible offensively, but pretty decent defensively. You know, if they want to take the chance, fine. I'd keep Kike at center, move Turner to second, Iglesias play shortstop. You could definitely do something like that uh, for sure. I, th I think, yeah. Yeah, but I don't know if Turner can play 162 games at shortstop. What do you think about the Rafi press conference today? Good that they extended homegrown star, though there's some work to do. I love the press conference today, man. I love the fact that Tom Warner actually got up there. A lot of people saying I put out a tweet after the uh, after the press conference. Most people seem to think that um, most people seem to think that Tom Warner did not want to be there. That was sort of the general consensus off of body language, which I can kind of see. But it was good to see him there. Obviously, I'm super excited about Rafi Devers. I mean, that was the one that needed to stay in Boston. He ended up doing. Who's your favorite player currently on the team? I do love Kike Hernandez, but I'd probably go Rafi. I mean, it makes sense. Um, Berlin, New Hampshire. What's going on, Douglas? I'm from New Hampshire. Javi Baez will be a Met. I don't know, man. 
It's crazy that no team signed Waka. You had to find Bloom. I go after him two, three years. Yeah, I don't know. Who do you want as the AAA middle infielders last year? Wait, do you know who was the AAA middle infielders last year? Wonder if they possibly play here. Um, yeah, it was uh, it was Fitzgerald and Downs most of the year, uh, with Christian Koss mixed in there. And obviously, Downs is gone, so you're looking at at uh, Fitzgerald or Koss. And Fitzgerald isn't on the forty man, so that's gonna be that's gonna make it really interesting. Um, make Brazier the designated opener. <laughs> Duran's more of a corner outfielder. Right now, Duran's not an outfielder. He still needs to work on his fielding, so we'll see. I imagine a imagine a blockbuster for Jazz and Cabrera from the Marlins. That would be insane. At the very least, at the very least, Jazz would be really fun to watch. Do I like the new Nesson lineup? Um, yeah, I, I do. I, I I I'm gonna make I might make a video about it. Um with talking about the new lineup and stuff like that, but there's a lot more pressing matters to get to before I get to that. But yeah, I, I'm a big fan of Uke in the booth. I love Uke. So I know some people didn't love his, and he wasn't the greatest uh, color commentator in the world, but um, he, he was, he was, you know, he really grew into the role and he, he made the last half of the season, like the last 20 games enjoyable to watch, right? Every like sixth or seventh inning when the Red Sox were losing, because it felt like they were losing every sixth or seventh inning. Um, he would come out with some new food item. It was a lot of fun to watch. So yeah, I'm a big fan of get letting, you know, you develop more in the booth as a Padres fan. Would you guys trade Verdugo and sale for Kim? Um, <sighs> probably not. I don't think so. I, I think the problem with trading Chris Sale is one, you guys as as the Padres organization are asking a lot more than the value of Verdugo and Sale. So that's gonna be a tough sell, Cobra. Two, I, I just think personally as as you know, if I were running the Red Sox, I just think there's more reward in keeping sale than there is in letting him go right now. Um it would have to probably be something structured around Tanner Houck, who it can be a starter for sure. Um, and Nick Pavetta is the two that I would start the, the transaction with. Cause honestly, Hassan Kim, like I said, is good. He's a very solid player, but he's not, you know, he's not, I'm trying to think he's not Willie Adamas, right? Willie Adamas is, is probably a tier below being an elite shortstop. Kim is probably a good shortstop. He's not a, a very good shortstop. So it'd have to be somewhere in that region. Um, who's your top three players with the most pressure to perform this year? I have to imagine Chris sales. Um, yeah, yeah. I think the top three players to perform would have been Trevor story. Um, let me think top three. I, I'm probably going Verdugo is, is up there because even the Red Sox as a whole wanted more from Verdugo and just did not get more from Verdugo. Um, I think, uh, I think Sale has to be on there, and I think I think people are gonna say Whitlock, Amen, um, mostly because you know he he was very he's obviously extremely good in the bullpen. But the problem is is there's gonna be a, a, an adjustment period to the starting rotation. I think that's gonna be where a lot of people want to see him perform. So, do you think the Red Sox regret DFA Jeter Downs? No, I, yeah, I still don't think Jeter Downs is gonna be a guy. Was a guy that they would have been like, okay, let's go, you know, what's going on, Jack? Looking forward to the 2024 MLB season. Yeah, that's what it feels like right now. <laughs> Thoughts on uh, um, and Manuel Valdez? Um, yeah, I think I think he's got a lot of upside. The problem is he's a very streaky hitter, and he didn't really do that well when he got to Boston. So that's my biggest problem with with uh, um, and Manuel Valdez. So. Yeah, I think he could be solid. He's not great defensively. He he does have moments where he's really good at the plate. It's just a it's just a matter of whether or not he's actually going to be able to um whether or not he's going to be able to keep up any sort of cuz even if he's super streaky, but he's really good for 2 weeks, bad for a week, really good for 3 weeks, that's sort of streaky. I think that's okay. It just depends on how he translates to major league baseball. But I you know, at this point, give him a shot, you know. Corbin, would you rather trade Nick Pavetta or Tanner Houck? It's not even a question, Nick Pavetta. To get value out of sale, trade, they'd have to wait for him to make starts. Yeah, you're right. 
Brendan Roger. I would I would love Brendan Roger. I've talked about it before. Oh, we finally got Javi Baez. So yeah, Javi Baez good defensively. Very. Good. We always knew he had a ton of pop, but here's the problem, right? Is your K rate's really down? Your walk rate's one of the worst in the league. Your chase rate is the worst in the league. Whiff rate's really really bad. So it's it's sort of like you know with Javi Baez you're taking a chance. Ah, man, I don't know. I just don't know. And this is the problem right now, you know. Is no one knows what the what the right course of action is here. What's up, Nathan? I'm hanging in, man. I'm, I'm having a good time. Even if even if uh, you know, even if the Red Sox aren't doing well, I'm having. A, I always have a ton of fun talking to you guys on stream. So, uh, you know, if we lost sixty, you know, if we lost one hundred and sixty-two games next year, we'd still be doing live streams. Um. Uh, yeah, I'm good. Nathan, I'm good with I'm good with Bauer. I'd love Pablo or Edward though. I am all set with having Bauer on this Red Sox team. No, thank you. He is Pac Man. Yeah, that guy lying in Texas ten is never right. <laughs> that guy is never right. Wonder if Nicky Lopez is possible from the Reds, uh, Royals. I wouldn't be surprised either. I would love Brendan Rodgers, but his prospect pool is going to be a really, really interesting what it would take to get Brendan Rodgers. I, I don't know if the Red Sox would be willing to do that. This would be a great plug-in. Um, and with, with Trevor coming back with a fully healed elbow, that's another thing too, is, is when he comes back, he will be able to play shortstop, which is a good thing. So you got to remember that. So do they look at a second baseman or do they look at the shortstop, you know? Um, but Brandon Rogers would be ideal. Hit 266 last year with a 325 on base percentage, 13 home runs, 63 RBIs, 140 hits and 572 at bats. Not a guy who strikes out a lot. Not a guy who chases a lot or whiffs a lot. Pretty good exit velocity, pretty good expecting batting average. I mean, he would be ideal, but he would he would cost a lot, man. He would cost a lot. Any trade right now will lose. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. Oh, we were gonna look at Nikki Lopez, right? I'm working. I'm working my girlfriend on uh, on technical issues. Um, yeah, Nicky, Nicky Lopez. I mean, he'd be good to be a good defensive replacement. Guy is really hard to get out, but man, he is not a good. <laughs> he is not a good fielder or not a good hitter. <laughs> ay ay ay. If healthy sale and doing decent socks out of it, do we trade him at the deadline? I don't I don't think so. Based on the current healthy lineup, we're on the road to watching the worst Red Sox lineup of my lifetime just after the Divers news. Yeah. Yeah, I agree, Jack. It's not gonna be a good one. Yeah, Robbie, I, I've never argued how good Bauer is on the on the mound, but yeah, I'm good. I don't want him. Um, big boy, you said you're cursed. Why are you cursed? Rogers is way cheaper than Kim. I don't think so. What do we do with Maguire, Devers, Verdugo, Yoshida, Me Meyer, Casas, Valdez, all those lefties? Uh, well, the, the chances of every one of those guys being super solid, the entirety of their career is really, really small. Um, I would say... I would say that's why it's important to bring in some right-handed power hitting, some young right-handed power hitting, you know. Get Ho uh, Jose Iglesias on a two-year deal. That's probably what we're going to have to do, honestly. I appreciate it, Lawrence. Thank you, man. Thanks for watching. I I'll, I'll try my best. What about Vidal Brujan? That's not – I mean – yeah, 
the problem is with Vidal Brujan is what he was a he was a top prospect for a while. Um, they probably won't have a lot of statistics on him because he didn't get a ton of at, at bats this year. Yeah, Max Agudelo at thirteen. So you know, I don't know. I do Vidal Brujan maybe, maybe. Um, Red Sox trade for Xander and Croningworth for uh, Verdugo, Costas, and Valdez. That would be a wild trade. <laughs> um, we need to think long term with the trade market. Blood in the water right now. Yeah, it, it, making a trade right now, you're losing it. The Red Sox will lose any trade that they make right now. Have to. With the expanded schedule, or am, I, am I going to any bucket list stadiums? I wish, man. I can't get enough time off of work to do that. I would love to. I would love to, but it would be it would be a lot of fun. The Red Sox need to take on bad contract for a shortstop, either Yelly contract plus Adamus or Baez contract. Um, yeah, it seems like it seems like the Brewers aren't going to want to part with Christian Yelich and Adamus, so I don't even know if that's available. The bias contract is something that I think could be interesting. Um, so uh, you know, I don't know. Sign Fam, Eric's Eric's Tommy Tommy Fam's number one fan. Um, if we picked up a shortstop to keep to keep Kike in center field, how do we feel about Arroyo being everyday second base? If Arroyo could stay healthy, I'd be so down for having Arroyo at second base. But because he can't stay healthy. You can't go into a season just assuming that Trevor or that uh, that Christian Arroyo will be able to play second base every day. It's just it, you can't do it. Yeah, Lawrence. Yeah, I'm 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 very okay with not having Trevor Bauer on this team. Um, let me see what else do we got. San Diego. Yes, yeah, San Diego signing a ton of people. Yeah, Nathan, they want a lot. They want a lot, man. Ray's broke. Bruhan. Bruhan is killing it in winter ball right now. Yeah, I mean, it would be an interesting pickup. It would for sure. I'd be interested in it. I'm not getting rid of Hauk. I would prefer if they didn't get rid of Hauk. This is gonna be kind of a this is gonna be kind of a uh This would be kind of a, a controversial take, I think, but I would rather trade Schreiber than Tanner Hauk. Sometimes, man, so C C W. Sometimes, man, it's it's not about the cost. It's not, and, and with this situation, it's not. Kim's the best option for you guys. Yeah, again, I, I think Kim would be a fantastic addition. I'd be so excited to get uh, Ha Young Kim. Problem is, the you guys want the world for him. He's just not worth the world. You happy with our catchers? I'm not ecstatic about our catchers, but there are clearly bigger needs. I, J Big Boy, I do not. Uh, is there a reason to not sign Iglesias? Um, well, I mean, probably the main reason to not sign Jose Iglesias is is uh, locker room stuff. From, from the little tidbits I've heard, he's not the best locker room guy. It seems like they want a lot of locker room guys. Um. Once this loads, we'll take a better look. I mean, yeah, he's not a guy who's gonna walk. He's either you know, you know, he's not a guy who's gonna hit a ton of home runs. Only three home runs last year. Really good whiff percentage, which is good. Really good K percentage, that's really good. Um, problem is he's not the best defender in the world, or at least he didn't have the best defensive season last year. Arm strength, I don't really, you know, personally, I don't really care about arm strength, but that's something a lot of people care about. This is these, all these blue things are a problem. Where he's bad in, he's really, really bad. So I don't know. I don't know. There are some reasons why the Red Sox may not go after Jose Iglesias, yes. What about Chapman and Sanchez? Very, do not want Chapman. Um, wouldn't love Sanchez. I'd be all right with it, I guess. Do I miss Darwin's in? Not even a little bit. <laughs> Trade for O'Neill Cruz, that would be a, that'd be a crazy trade. Don't think that's going to happen. Is there any interesting center field trade options if they do go the route of Kike at shortstop? 
Um, not the problem is I don't know who's available for for center fielders and who's not. Well, who do the who do the uh, Rockies have in center field? Hampson, Garrett Hampson. I, I, yeah, I don't know. I don't know honestly, Daniel. We could take a look, but take on the Correa situation. Um, it kind of makes sense. He ended back up with the Twins. They're the ones who saw him play last year. They're the ones who saw him. Um, you know, in action with whatever injury he's dealing with. So it makes sense that they're the ones who took the chance on it, but I'm shocked, shocked the Mets didn't work something out for him. Shocked. I'm happy with Iglesias, a good vet, a single machine, still a solid fielder. Yeah, I, I mean, there there are a lot of reasons to sign Jose Iglesias, but um, there are a lot of reasons to not, too. So, it's, it you know, none of the... None of the good options none of the options really left on the free agent market are going to be guys where it's like okay you know okay this is a good signing right there's not a ton of those guys left there's going to be a lot of okay these guys are all right but uh, man i don't know when is tati suspension over um i think only like 20 25 games in this season Machado is staying in San Diego. I could see it. Tatis will be back on 420. There you go. Should sign a DH and play Justin Turner at second. The problem is, you know, when he signed here, he was ecstatic about not having to play the field all the time. Now telling him to play the field all the time, I don't know how, I, like, you know, he's getting older. I don't know if he's going to be able to do that. The real reason uh, Gary Sanchez was DFA was as a Yankee. Uh, his defense was terrible. He can't hit well enough to be a DH. Yeah, that's kind of where I'm at, too. The Mets want Machado next year. Thank God. Thank God. Thank God the Red Sox locked up Rafael Devers, man. I could not have dealt with the Mets going after Rafael Devers for third base. I couldn't have gone. I couldn't have dealt with the Padres going after Rafael Devers at third base. That is a terrifying thought. Reynolds is the only one I can think of for a center fielder. Yeah, Cattell Marte is a decent option. Cattell Marte is kind of terrible at center field, though. Like, he is not. What did he play mostly last year? He played mostly second base last year. Does that sound right? Um, ba 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 ba. I mean, he's, yeah, he did. I mean, he did good. This would be a good pickup. He's not very good defensively. That's the problem. Um, and with the shift, that's you know we were we were finally excited to get a, a second baseman where he can play second base truly, and and it's just not going to be a thing. So um, that really really sucks. And then obviously Brian Reynolds would be a fantastic addition, but I just don't think they're asking a lot right now. The last thing I heard about Brian Reynolds was that the Padres were the ones who were in on it. Red Sox now just reported the Red Sox and Greg Allen are a one agreement, one year agreement, and an invite to spring training. Interesting. I don't know. I don't know anything about Greg Allen. Andres over Iglesias. It, it's kind of a toss up for me. I, I think both of them are would be adequate, but I don't think they're going to be very good. Willie Adamas will be a beast at Fenway Park. He would be fantastic at Fenway Park. Yeah. In Arizona here, why no Ahmed and an outfielder from Arizona? That would be great too. But from what I, you know, the the trade that we saw for what Varsho to the Blue Jays and Varsho was really good, but uh, Varsho wasn't uh, Varsho wasn't their best, and they got a lot for Varsho. So I, you know, I don't know, I don't know what it would look like to get any of them from. Uh, Arizona, but I can guarantee you it's not going to, this is the problem is every time we talk about a trade now, it's like, great, right? This is, this is exactly what we need. We need this guy, but what is it going to cost to get him? And is it worth it with this team this year? That's the problem. Kim and Trent. Yeah, that's, that's what I would do too. Rare. That's what I would go for, but it looks like they want way too much. It looks like they want way too much. Thoughts on uh, thoughts on Gavin Lux? I don't know. 
I'm looking up Gavin Lux statistics from last year. Let's take a, take a quick peek together, chat. I mean, he was he was average all the way around, and he's a great defensive player. Yeah, this would be a good one to go after. I, the problem is with me is with Gavin Lux is the Dodgers are notorious for for making players a lot better than they are. So to underperform for the Dodgers makes me a little bit nervous. But he, I mean, he looks really good, or not really good. He looks decent on paper. Um, I would have to assume that. I, yeah, this could be someone the Red Sox look after. I don't know what's left on his contract, but. Um, what else we got? The only way the Red Sox won't get fleeks is if they bail out a team underwater with a contract. I think even then, have the Padres and Mets just decided to sign everyone and force all of their teams out of business? It seems like that's exactly what they're trying to do, Jack. <laughs> Iglesias should be able to handle second if you have reservations about him playing shortstop now that the infield shift has been banned. Yeah, I think Iglesias would be decent. Can I look up Greg Allen? Yeah, this is who the Red Sox just signed, apparently. Uh, is Greg Allen going to even come up on here? Yeah, you, there he is. Oh, it's a minor league contract, Chad. They just apparently signed him. I didn't get anything on here, but... He only had 8, 118 at bats. Oh yeah, look at that! I just got the notification. <laughs> that was weird. The sources confirm the Red Sox are closing in on a minor league deal with outfielder Greg Allen. Yep. Oh, let's see what Brewers talking Brewers baseball. Um. So yeah. I don't know much about him. Former Indian, former Yankee, former Padre. Or, sorry, former Pirate. What did he say it was? Chris Cotillo. Let's see what he had. Yeah, so former Cleveland, San Diego, Padre, Pittsburgh. Looks like he's a depth piece. Probably a triple-A guy. Uh, Eamon said, where will all top prospect talent be starting this year in the minors? Who are double-A, triple-A guys? Um, I think our big pieces, Mayer, uh, Mayer probably start in high A. I would assume York stays in high A. I would assume Romero's in low A. Um, Blaze will probably be high A. Although, yeah, yeah, I would be shocked if any of those guys started the year in double A. I wouldn't be shocked if they ended the year in double A. Um, is there anyone good going into triple A? The only one I, the only one off the top of my head from like the top 10 that I know is going to be in double A is going to be Sedane Rafaela. Uh, Miguel Blades will probably be in low A this year. He was in the Florida complex league last year. Um, uh, trying to think about their triple A guys, obviously pitchers, Brian Maida, if he stays here and doesn't get traded, uh, Chris Murphy, a, there's a third one, another lefty. That looks just like Chris Murphy. Joining late. Welcome in, Big Island. Um, thoughts on Kim or Grisham in San Diego? Yeah. I don't think it would be Sale involved. But yeah, those that would be my target. Kim would be my target. If I had a target, Kim would be my target. Why not Mateo? The Orioles have a... Yeah, Mateo wouldn't be bad either. Mateo is terrible at the plate, but Mateo can play shortstop, and we need a shortstop, so maybe, yeah. I wouldn't be I wouldn't be shocked if the Red Sox at least looked at Mateo. I don't know what it would cost to get Mateo here, though. That's the problem. Not sure why the Padres are asking for the moon for Kim. They have bogey shortstop. I mean, they have four shortstops right now. Five if you include, um, five if you include Tatis when he comes back. So you know I, they're asking for the world, uh, Pac-Man, because they can. Because the Red Sox are in such a bad position, they can ask for that. Rojas defensively would have been solid. Yeah, he's with the Dodgers now. See you, Liam. Thanks for all the hype, man. I appreciate you. <clears throat> it's uh no it's miguel blaze blaze i always say blaze blaze yeah it's blaze miguel blaze i'm still pissed about trevor yeah yeah i saw the i saw the uh i saw the reports on on duval 
Um, last year, tough year for him. If we go into baseball savant, and I'll go into baseball reference too for Adam Duvall because there's a different, there's such a difference between this year for Adam Duvall and last year for Adam Duvall. Because this year, he only had 287 plate appearances, hit only 213, with, but with 12 home runs, which is pretty good. Really good outfielder, really good outfielder. So if they do want, if they do want Kike Hernandez at shortstop, Adam Duvall could definitely play the outfield really well. Um, but here, here's where everyone gets excited. In 2021, he led, um, I don't know if that's a national or American league. I get national league. He led the national league in RBIs. He had 38 home runs. He had 228, which I, which isn't terrible. 102 OPS plus, um, he had 17 doubles. This is a guy who could add a lot of pop to the Red Sox lineup. I mean, the problem is here is when you look at it, he's a little bit streaky, right? 2020, we're not going to count this season, but 2019, he was hurt, only played in 41 games. 2018, he had, uh, where am I? He had 15 home runs. And then he had a couple of seasons with 30. So Duvall would be really interesting. First stream, welcome in, Wolf. Welcome in, man. Alex Spear did not have nice things to say about Valdez's defense on the podcast recently. Yeah, it's not good. On the prospects, it's worth noting that Tampa Bay under Heim very rarely rushed talent to the majors. Juan Franco is the only exception I can think of. Yeah, yeah, it makes sense. It makes total sense. Happy birthday, Quest. Happy birthday, my man. Hopefully it's a good one. Blaze Jordan. Heard that the Dodgers and Marlins are talking about a Miguel Rojas trade. Yeah, it worked. They he got traded. Um, why would acquiring a shortstop who can't hit be better than calling one up who can't who can't hit? It seems like all the minor league guys have solid gloves. They do, but the problem is you don't want to you don't want to. The first couple of months of a minor leaguer's career is such an important part, right? Because the average the average career in Major League Baseball is just a year and a half. That's it. So your first impression is really, really important. Yeah, you like Duran, right? Gets one or two choices, get one or one or two chances. Bobby Dahlbeck's get one or two chances. But that's not usually the the um that's not usually the happenstance, right? Most of the time they come up because they want to the the team wants them to come up and then they flame out and then they're either traded or they're back in the minors, they end up as a quad A guy. So to bring up a guy too early could absolutely kill absolutely kill his uh could absolutely kill his confidence, right? And then you're dealing with say you bring you you have Marcel Meyer for some insane reason, right? Skip double A, triple A, and now he's in the major leagues. This dude has only pace, faced high A pitching. Now, obviously, high A pitching is fairly advanced, but even comparing MLB to triple uh, A, that's a huge gap. So there's going to be an adjustment period, in a place, especially in a place like Boston. It's just that's such a hard place to grow and develop already. And then on top of that, you add in not being able to play any other players, any other like uh, uh, levels up until the major leagues, except for high A, which you're essentially playing 18, 19, 20 year olds. That's not a, that's not good. Right? So Marcel Amai is not getting called up this year. You're not going to see Nick York. You're not going to see blaze. You're not going to see any of these guys. And that's the reason what's a fair trade for Kim. Um, AR, I saw your question. I'll get to it in a second. Uh, for Haseon Kim, I mean, value-wise, trading trading Hauk straight up for Kim, it, it would be an easy one. But with the way with the way the Red Sox are right now, the Padres are asking for Tanner Hauk plus three prospects, which is not good. Do you think Duran could do well this year? I'm still pretty nervous about it. You know, I think there is something there with Duran, and I I truly think that there is some. Um, I think he could be a decent player. I just don't know if Boston's the right spot for him. Um, uh, do, 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 do. Where was it? AR, I don't want to miss your question. Do you think Maddow will be the impact? Will be an impact player this year? I think he might be. Yeah, I think he'll start in the bullpen about halfway through. <laughs> don't 
Dahlbeck L player. <laughs> um, can the Red Sox survive without Darwin's and Hernandez? I don't know, Jack. It's gonna be <laughs> it's gonna be difficult to to see a bullpen constructed any way with uh, without being around Darwin's and Hernandez. So I don't know. <laughs> When do you think you'll hit 10,000 subscribers? Man, I don't know. It's it's insane that we're at 4,000 subscribers. I can't even wrap my head around 10,000 subscribers. I'm nervous about 5,000 because at 5,000, I got to get a tattoo. So, What's going on, Mafia? What's going on, my man? Welcome in. Uh, do y'all see the report that Dahlbeck could be a pitcher? When Cora first saw Dahlbeck, uh, he was a broadcaster and said Dahlbeck will be an MLB pitcher. He throws in the mid-90s, and they say in college – he had an MLB uh, level changeup. That'd be interesting. That would be imagine. Imagine Bobby Dahlbeck becomes like a. <laughs> imagine Bobby Dahlbeck becomes like a staple in the Red Sox bullpen. <laughs> I want to keep Hauk. I would love to keep Hauk too. I said. I said before. I would personally rather trade Schreiber than John Hauk, which is crazy because I loved John Schreiber too. Duran needs a mental reset more than anything. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. And it's going to be so hard for him to get that in Boston because, you know, Boston, Boston fans in particular, you get, you, you know, you have one bad series as a rookie and all of a sudden, I mean, people are saying Tristan Casas is a bust already. Um, and, and so for Jaron Duran to just absolutely get torched, I don't know how you come back from that. Saw Dahlbeck in college. He was a stud pitcher. Interesting. Can we get a Kim from the Padres? I believe that'd be a good move for us. We've been talking. I think Kim's been the been the topic of conversation this entire live stream chat. <laughs> I think he has. Hold on, chat. I'm gonna take a drink of water and put an ad in. Dahlbeck is clearly a catcher. Yep. Can we send can, can we send Euclid, O'Brien, and Middlebrooks to San Diego for Don Arcel? That'd be the trade of the century. Let me tell you, that'd be ridiculous. How are people saying that Costas was hitting home runs left and right? I, you know, it's it's uh. I people people see the people see the batting average and get scared. I think it might be worth looking at tail a Taylor and Mondesi trade with the with the uh, sim. I mean, yeah, yeah, we can pull up the trade simulator, sure. I I don't know why I always put an apostrophe at the end of trade simulator. I would assume Mondesi wouldn't exactly be a lot to trade for, but again, it's a it's a bad situation for the Red Sox right now. Um, okay, so we're on the trade simulator chat. Take all of this with a grain of salt. These are not things that are set in stone here because Trade Simulator, as much as Robbie Hyde preaches the Trade Simulator, I'm not fully convinced it's it's as accurate as it could be, uh, but it's a good place to start. So I like it. Yeah, he's a 1.5. Throw him in. We could trade. Pff, trade. Uh, I don't even know who these people are. Some of these people. Uh, we'll play. We'll trade. Uh, Benellis is only a one point two. Interesting. We'll trade Bastardo. There you go. There's your Albert Del Mondesi trade. <laughs> Not exactly a hard guy to get. It just depends on where he's at, where the Red Sox are at in terms of their uh, ability. Oh wait, I've been doing this whole thing without showing you guys the screen <laughs> ego <laughs> my bad uh Heim bloom himself saying dahlbeck and verdugo could be the best pitching duo in mlb history <laughs> that would be wild 
in that game. Dahlbeck pitched eight innings, one earned, and 12 Ks. Hey, maybe Bobby Dahlbeck needs to needs to hit the uh, mound a little bit. They better build around Rafi and not have a repeat of Ted Williams. At the end of the career, the 60s fielded some dreadful teams. Yeah, I would be uh, I'd be shocked if they don't try to build around them. It would be such a waste of money. Quest, we, we have a first baseman, man. Jack, I don't know, man. I think there's a lot going on right now. I think that's why. <laughs> but I appreciate it. Thank you. Well said, T. Sid. T, I completely missed your message. I apologize. I apologize. I apologize. But I can't see it anymore. Oh, rookie of the year. We need a miracle right about now. We do need a miracle. Do you think Bale will be the next Pedro Martinez after working out with the Hall of Famer? I it's not it's certainly not going to hinder anything. That's for sure. Certainly not going to hinder anything. Um. So yeah, I, you know, I think he will be better for it for sure. I don't think he'll be the next Pedro. Mar I don't think anyone will ever ever be the next Pedro Martinez ever again. But he's certainly going to be very good in my opinion. He's going to be a very good pitcher. Uh, doo -ba -doo -ba -doo -ba -doo. In regards to the Mets and the Padres buying championships in the MLB is not a guarantee. This century, there have only been two teams to win the World Series with a top payroll: us and the Yankees. Yeah, I agree, and that's you know that's why celebrating Rafi is a good thing. You guys should be happy about Rafael Devers. We should be happy that uh, they signed him, and we could celebrate that. But we have to also realize that hey. You know, there's there's a lot that needs to happen around Rafael Devers to still make this a really good team. Dodgers, yeah, Dodgers traded for Miguel Rojas. What shortstops are in the free agent market? Um, you've got Elvis Andres and uh, Jose Iglesias. That's about it. Uh, how much longer do we give Duran? Um, I give Duran one more try. I would give Duran one more try. Who do you think is going to be at first base? Tristan Casas. Lowest payrolls this century to win the World Series. 03 Marlins. That makes sense. 2017 Astros. Well, there was a reason. There's a reason for that one, huh? 15 Royals. I'm surprised the Royals were even at 16th. That's crazy. All right, chat. Let's uh, let's have some fun, shall we? Who's your all-time Red Sox batting order and starting pitcher. For this, I was just trying to pull up like a Word document or something. Oops, I just pulled up so much stuff. Hold on. I was watching some Marvel YouTube videos before stream. Um, I don't think I have anything on here. Oh, just some stuff from... Okay. Um, please don't drink bail. Sorry about that. Who do you think is going to if we did that? Am I going to Winter Weekend? Yeah, Jay. I will be at Winter Weekend. If you guys see me at Winter Weekend and you want to say hi, please. I would love to meet you guys. It would be a ton of fun to say hi to you guys. Talk Red Sox, stuff like that. So, um, yeah, we get we got, you know, don't be afraid, <laughs> which is weird to say, but. <laughs> um, all right, so let's do this. Lead-off hitter, all-time lead-off hitter. All-time Red Sox lead-off hitter. I feel like if you're going by today's standard, Ted Williams would be a really good lead-off hitter. Mm. What do we got, chat? Thanks, Jack. I will. I'll make sure. I'm gonna. I might do a vlog. I don't know yet because I don't have like I don't have like press access or anything like that. So would you guys even be all that interested in in watching me just mosey around? Winter weekend at all? Bets, duh. Bets, yep. Um, Hirokazu Salamora. <laughs> Dodgers could be good trade partners because they want to get under the luxury tax after the uh, Miguel Rojas trade. Yeah, but I don't know who they'd want. Hopefully the Red Sox won't bring in another uh, Edgar Renta Rec Renteria or Julio Lugo. I didn't hate Julio Lugo, to be honest with you. Um. All right, two Ted Williams. 
three, David Ortiz. All right, so we got center fielder. What did what did Betts or uh, uh, Ted played what outfield? We'll just say outfield. Um, PD at second base, short. You know what we're gonna do, chat? We're gonna do this. We're gonna do. Um, we'll do yeah. We'll do PD at. We'll do PD hitting two. We'll do Ted hitting three. Yaz hitting four or five. Um, so there we go with outfield, DH, uh, second base, shortstop. Oh, man. But yeah, but you got to have Yaz in there. You can't not have Yaz. Maybe I'll do Ted three. Jonathan Arrows for clean. Weird one, but wonder if uh, Glaber would be a good fit. He probably would be a good fit, but I don't know what the Yankees would want for him. Maybe Verdugo? That'd be a really interesting one. I feel like you have to have Yushremski in there. All right, so would you rather have let's let's put up a poll. Would you rather have Yaz or Manny? And I'll do it for like five minutes, and we'll figure that out. Um, it is a lot of lefties, yes. How do I move this? Um, we're trying to build the we're trying to build the greatest lineup for the Red Sox in their history right now. Do we include Babe Ruth? I'm good. I'm never letting go over Dugo, bro. I just got his jersey. Uh, it might be a rough off season for you, Wolf Knights. <laughs> We'll be really good in three years. Yeah. Yeah. We'll be good in three years. I, I agree. But the problem is not all those prospects are going to fully pan out. Uh, so what is this? Right. Is Petey's a righty, right? Of course, it's not a recognized word. Um, right. Left. Left. Is Yaz right or left? I can't even remember. People want Boggs. Boggs a lefty, too. That's a problem. Euclid. Euclid could be a good one. Let's see what the poll is. Poll's got Yaz winning here. Paul, what, dude? I don't even know what that means. Now Manny's winning. Appreciate it, Paul. Thank you, man. Yaz and left. Can we just stick Ted Williams at first base? Is that a thing? Did he play first base at all? I kind of doubt it, right? Uh, he was a left fielder. Doesn't look like he played any games. At... Kind of wild that they have this. Military service. These were probably the best years of his career, too. Kind of crazy. He also only won two MVPs. For someone, for considered the greatest hitter of all time. Crazy that his, his, his on base percentage is the highest ever. That's wild. Why is, is, I thought 407 was the best batting average ever. Didn't even lead the league? Ay, yeah, yeah. What, what, what are we doing here? Fielding. Let's, let's see. He pitched. Look at that. Played no first base, chat. Ted Williams on the bench. <laughs> I'm keeping Yaz, chat. What's up, Echo? Fisk for catcher. Fisk or Yaz is going to be tough. Um, 
All right, so this is three lefties in a row. We're gonna move. We'll move Yaz down a little bit. We'll put Yaz to like. Put Yaz down here. Um. Shortstop, it's either Nomar or Xander, depending on how you look at it. I'm biased towards Xander, so we'll leave that one blank. Third base, do you go Rafi? Do you go Wade Boggs? Jimmy Fox, we could fit in somewhere. We could also put him at first base. We could put Jimmy Fox here and have him play first. And then we can put first, second, catcher, Veritek, or Fisk. Oh, man, there's a big difference here. Nomar. 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 All right, we'll go Nomar. Now we need a catcher, and what position are we missing? We have all the outfield. Third base. Catcher and third base. I would go Veritek and Rafi. I'd go... There you go. There's my starting lineup. Hate it or don't hate it. It's interesting that the uh, the Yads or Manning thing went fully, fully down the middle. Interesting. I like it, Amon. So did you guys watch the uh did you guys watch the Rafael Dever stuff? I'll try to see if there's any news here. Doesn't look like it. Just the Greg Allen stuff. Greg Allen has some Red Sox have some triple A depth. Could see Allen have an opportunity to win the fourth outfield spot. So, Chris Atfield, who's, who's very in, um, who's, who's very big in Sox prospects, with the update on Greg Allen and that that uh, signing, probably not worth the video, but uh, the very least, not a bad one. Um, but yeah, chat. The Red Sox are uh, kind of screwed right now. <laughs> All right, Chad, here's, here's a question for you. Would you rather the Red Sox, if they are to make a trade, go for middle infield help, outfield help, or starting pitching? That's what we're, that's what we're talking about now. <laughs> what? Clutch? I did not see that tweet. <laughs> no. I wanted to watch the Rafi signing, but I was at school. It's on... Um, <laughs> democracy doesn't work <laughs> i just saw that uh jack um okay i'll throw i'll throw outfield in there too What are, what are we thinking here, Chad? Middle infield and pitching. Pitching, middle infield. Oh, God. <laughs> this is a... Uh... Looks like middle infield's winning. What are we thinking, chat? Because because genuinely, it could be literally any of these. Literally any of these. Offering a no trade option. This is if this is if you want the Red Sox to trade. Who would you trade them for? You might as well tank the season and trade players on one to two year deals for controllable players, but most controllable pitchers. I, the problem is with one to two deals, you're not going to get like really good controllable pieces. That's just not going to happen. Fundamentally, it's not a good time to use your key prospect assets in a trade. The whole market is against us. Yeah. I mean, just, just based on pure bartering, 
Um, you're right. Yeah. But at the same time too, if you need to, you need to feel the team, you need to feel the team. <laughs> and it, it, even if you get, you know, uh, uh, even if you go for a, even if you go for a, say free agent shortstop and you get a decent starting pitcher, then fine. The thing about it is everyone is getting excited about a trade in reality. They're going to end up trading for some shortstop that has two home runs and batting 200. Maybe Verdugo for starting pitcher. He did want to be a. He did want to be a. Uh, he did want to be a pitcher. Yes, trade sale for a team's top ten prospect. That's not going to happen. Fenway open the same day as the Titanic. Interesting. I did not know that. Got to give something to get something for sure. But the, the question is, is it worth giving up what the, um, is it worth giving up what we're getting in return? That's the question. And right now it's probably not Jeff. Uh, Miguel Rojas off the table, Dodgers trade for him. That also probably means that the Dodgers aren't super interested in trading a lot of their middle infielders too. Like that's probably that's probably what that means realistically. Worrying about sale for the season, I wouldn't worry too much. Um, I think I once we saw him healthy in twenty twenty one for a little bit, and he was pretty good. It's a Red Sox account. What's a Red Sox account? Starting pitching looks fine, especially if Sale comes back. Yeah, I'm not I'm not as worried as about the starting pitching as most people are. There's just a lot of question marks. <laughs> Hello, Johnny. I don't like trading for a guy who's on a one year deal. At least wants someone that has two years left. I don't know if there's really anyone. This is such a problem now. It's just such a problem now. What is the... Does Fangraphs have their projected starting lineups right now? I'm, lo I'm looking, chat. Hold on. If I just look up Fangraphs, Red Sox will come up. I really don't use Fangraphs as much as I should. I'm, I'm a baseball reference guy. Uh, this is what I want. A depth chart, maybe? Projected roster. All right, this is 2022. Don't want that. Hey, what's up, Gord? Glad you make it. Um, opinions on Pavetta in rotation or bullpen. He, he, the fact that Pavetta got the fact that Pavetta got had thirty one starts last year is huge. It's very undervalued, and I think that's something that um I think that's something that needs to be in the um in the rotation. The fact that he got 31 starts, whether or not he was good or bad is a different story, but the fact that he did get 31 uh starts is huge. Okay, so this is this is what ha um <clears throat> this is what Fangraphs has for our starting lineup. And I don't know if you're going to be able to see this whole thing. You're not. Hold on. There we go. Pitching is the least disaster situation. I agree. Uh, they got a lot of good talent in the minors, and maybe it's time to give them a chance. They're just not ready yet. That's a problem. Huge overpay for trade on starting caliber infielder preseason. Yeah, but I mean, you need something. Is there a rule? Is there a shift rule this year? And if so, what's your take? Yeah, um, this year it'll be. So it's essentially a shift. Uh, regulator, I would say. You have to stay within the boundaries of your base. You just stay within the boundaries of the infield. There's a certain place where you can't go and where you can go. Um, 
So, yeah, it's uh, it's going to be extremely important for sure. Pavetta had a down year when the entire team had a disappointing year. He can recover. I, I agree. Yeah, it's not a great lineup. I'll tell you that much for sure. I think, uh, I think you know, there are some things to get a little bit excited about. I think Yoshida being here could be cool. Um, I think watching Casas develop could be really cool. We need, what we really need here is, is another righty. You really need another righty in this lineup. So you have one, two, three, four, five, six lefties and only one righty or only three righties. That's a problem. So whoever you get, because you do need someone, you're going to have to get a right-handed hitter. And I don't know if that's, you know, Rob Ref Snyder going into center field instead of Jaron Duran. Maybe that's what they do. Um, to at least get some depth in there. But that that's a huge problem. This That's the biggest problem I see right here. Um, also, Devers is having a down year being the 23rd power ranked hitter in baseball is very impressive. Um Yeah, but it's not it's not it's not a lineup that's going to blow you away. Devers and Kike are probably our two best players right now. Yeah. I would say those are our two best players right now and that is uh that is not exactly fantastic. If you take a look at the rotation they have put together, I don't love this either. Excuse me. I don't know if I don't know if um, where Bayo fits in with this right here. Actually, you guys probably can't see that. All right, Heim, get on it, baby. Give me Lopez. Pavetta may not be a Cy Young caliber, but he gave you a ton of innings, which is extremely underrated trait. Yeah, and that's why I think you keep him in the rotation. Unless, unless, if you're going after Ha Seong Kim, because either way, you need a solid in middle infielder, and they're like, look, man, we'll, we'll take Nick Pavetta and, and two or three prospects. I'm in. From Wakefield, what's up, JB? Who's out there right-handed? Uh, both, of, both of the shortstops right now, Elvis Andres and uh, uh, Jose Iglesias are right-handed, so that could be someone who they take a look at. Uh, Sox beat the, yeah, I know I was looking at Robbie when I was looking at, uh, highlight videos to put into my video. Yeah. They were all, um, Red Sox hitting home runs off of James Paxton, which is pretty funny. The fact that Chris sales only 33 about to be 34 is pretty impressive too. I thought he was much younger. Also Garrett Whitlock being 27. I did not expect either. I'm excited for Garrett Whitlock too. Um, Wong, Ref Snyder, right-handed. Yeah, so you could plug in. So if you plug in Wong at, sh at uh, Wong at catcher and Rob Ref Snyder at center or right or left or whatever, it'd have to be center. Never mind. You can't put Yoshida in left. You can't put Verdugo. Or, sorry, you can't put Yoshida in center. You can't put Doogie in center. It'd have to be Rob Ref Snyder in center. Then you got a little bit more of a balanced lineup. But what are you getting out of that? I mean, Connor Wong's projection is 10 home runs, 250 uh, average. Yeah, why wouldn't they put? This makes no sense. Either way, man, Reese McGuire was the 14th pick overall in the draft. That's crazy. Christian Arroyo was the 25th. Interesting. Stuff you don't know, chap. Bayo's been, yeah, Bayo's been, um, Bayo's been omitted from every single projection I've seen for the Red Sox rotation, which is interesting. What do you think about the 20-second pitch clock? I hope our staff can deal with it. I, I think the pitchers will be more adaptable than the hitters, which is interesting to say. Per report, Luis Arais plus prospect is headed to the Twins for Lopez. Wait, what? <laughs> Rafael Devers just 
the crowd going nuts for Rafi Big Scoop um, at the at the uh, Celtics game. Look at this. Crowd just going nuts for him. That's awesome. Where'd you guys see the? Uh... Oh, there it is. Twins and Marlins are currently in discussion surrounding right-hander Pablo Lopez and utility man Luis Ariz. Oh, boy. This is hilarious. We're just going to let this play. Uh, here's the problem. is is Okay, so the Marlins were, in my opinion, one of the best trade targets for the Red Sox. Um, so for him, for, for them, for, for them to trade away Miguel Rojas and Pablo Lopez, they're probably not looking to trade anyone else significant. Um, so there's, there's a big problem. We do a real closer door. It's kind of crazy to say on paper, are the Sox still last place in 2023 right now? Um, I would say they're not a lock for the division. That's for sure. <laughs> Justin Turner has had an incredible year for, for a 264th pick. I didn't even see that. Yeah. 204th pick. That's pretty crazy. Kike, Kike making a pretty decent name for himself being the sixth round 191st pick, huh? Yeah, Heim, get on this. What are we doing? What are we doing? What's up, Darby? Kenley Jansen slows the dog. Yeah, that was something that that was something that was brought um, that was something that was brought up in his press conference, and he's pretty confident he could figure it out. And he's been in the league for a while. I trust. I trust that he'll be able to figure it out. Uh, what's your prediction for wins this year? I think if every single thing goes right, which it already is going the exact opposite of right, um, will be a will be a a eighty five win t- season. But do you think we'll get Jazz Chisholm? Ah, guys, I don't know, man. If they trade Miguel Rojas, what does their depth look like? Is it gonna tell me on this? Like, if I look up. It's not going to let me do that, huh? Oh, teams. There we go. Uh, NL Central? No, this one. All right. So, the, I mean, they have a decent... Uh, so, so, they'll probably start Wendell... I don't think they have Barity on the team anymore. They definitely don't have. Is this Gene Segura? It is Gene Segura. Um, yeah, they're not trading any more middle infielders. They're not. They have a lot of starting pitchers, though. Maybe they take a look at this. Lazardo would be fantastic. Cabrera would be fantastic. Maybe they take a chance on Trevor Rogers. Uh, Yuri Perez is a great prospect. Eighty-five wins doesn't get a third wild card slot. Not even close. Yeah, who are the best free agents left? Probably Waka, Glacius, and Andres. It's kind of a it drops off a ton, man. It is it is brutal. Think we'll go after Otani this offseason? I'd be shocked. I'm not educated enough to really say, but to me, trading Casas, Rafaela, or Meyer seems like a bad idea. Um, I would say Casas and Meyer are definitely bad ideas. Rafael is one that's why do I have 10 notifications? Um uh, Rafaela is one that I, I could part with, but it'd have to be someone with really that's really good. Sox and you trade Dahlbeck and Duran for the right price. Yeah, I think it sounds like Duran's going to be a pretty big, big part of 2023, though. 
technically I'm an MLB free agent. True, if any team wants to check in on Jack, he, he is a free agent. <laughs> Uh, I've been in and out and I'm having trouble believing that they're going for free agents instead of trades because of the roster crunch. The only, yeah, that's the thing too, is they, they haven't announced, they announced, um, they announced Turner. They still need to announce Corey Kluber. So I don't know if they're going to do that or not. Yeah, it's just, it just, it, 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 everything lined up for a big trade. And now I don't know. I, I really don't know. Because what's the point of going after a, a big trade piece if that's if you need more? There's no point in in completely gouging your farm system just for you know one or two pieces that you need. So I don't I don't know. Jorge Alfaro, yeah. I mean, yeah, Jose Iglesias makes the most sense, but I, I don't know. 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 Reese McGuire will be the only bright spot in the lineup this season. Ray, what, dude? Did you completely miss Tristan Casas, uh, Rafael Devers, Kike Hernandez? Yeah, uh, Yasutaka, Masataka Yoshida. Heard Trout wants out of the Angels. <laughs> That'd be ideal. To to say that there's a difference in saying Ray that this this lineup isn't what you wanted it to be, and to say that there's not going to be a single bright spot in this lineup. There's a big difference to say that. How do I vote for all the options? <laughs> problem is, problem is, you can't trade for every single one. Who do you think we'll add in the remainder of the off season? I think we'll get either Andres or Iglesias. Um, yeah, I, I think we'll get one of those two. I, I honestly have no idea who they're gonna add at this point. Do you even try? Um. Uh, like, like uh, genuinely, there's a difference between, there's a difference between being optimistic and being realistic. And I'm somewhere in between right now trying to figure out like, cause at some point, at some point the Red Sox are going to be competitive. And so if the idea going into this off season was, Hey, we're going to trade for some controllable pieces that may not be the best right now, but will develop into a really great piece for this Red Sox team. That's a good idea, but I, I, you know, I don't think that even getting that right now is going to be something that um, they're going to be able to do without completely losing on the trade. Um, hot take, Kike, like a Royal, is just a backup who's getting regular playing time. That's a hot take and just completely wrong. Kike was love on the MLB network today. He said that the plan all along was for him to play shortstop and he, and it's also his personal preference. Interesting. I did not know that Carl. Was that an interview with him, Carl? Do I have any autograph stuff? Hold on. Let me see. Hold on. All of those are autograph baseball cards. All of those are autographed baseball cards. Um, those are the top shelf is my prize possessions. It's uh, this one is a Tristan Casas, Marcel Meyer dual autograph card. This is a Ted Williams 1956. I could be wrong on that. 1958 maybe baseball card. And then I have the Rafael Devers autographed baseball card. And those are those are my prize jewels. But yeah, all of those are signed Red Sox cards. Uh, I'm excited about Yoshida lighting up the leadoff spot, to be honest with you. Gets on base. Yeah. 
Yeah, I'm excited to see what Yoshida can do as well. I think Yoshida's going to be a great, great addition to this Red Sox team. Johnny, if if we get to a point in 2025 where Rafael Devers is hitting... Boston, please go with Duran center field. Uh, too many questions this year. There's a lot of questions. Kike's only played 20 games at shortstop. Is that true? Uh, under over 60 wins. Over 60 wins. Come on, man. Yeah, it was an interesting interview. He spoke to Cora the day Bogart signed with San Diego, and they both agreed that he was a starting shortstop. I mean, that makes sense. I wouldn't mind Kike at shortstop. He's a good defender. They just need some center fielders. And I like I like I like the idea of Kike stepping up and being a, a leader on this Red Sox team. What's up, Craig? I've heard the Red Sox are reportedly interested in signing former Cincinnati Red and Atlanta Brave outfielder Adam Duvall. Yes, that would be correct. What's up, Mike? Or is it Sam? Sorry. One of the two. Sam Mike. Uh Bale will be a superstar one day, in my limited opinion. I agree. I think Bale is posed poised to be a very, very good pitcher. We should expect Yoshi to take some time to adapt. Yeah, yeah. I think there's going to be an adaption period, but I don't. I, personally, I don't think that Yoshida's adaption period is going to be adoption period. Adaption period one of the two is going to be as big of a gap as we may think, and that's just strictly because of how well he understands the strike zone. Um, because the strike zone doesn't change from Japan to to the United States. The strike zone is almost exactly the same. There may be a couple inches here or there, but for the most part, it's almost exactly the same. Um, and that's why, to me, and that was sort of his bread and butter, right? He understood and was able to identify pitches within the strike zone, was able to understand and identify pitches outside of the strike zone. And so, for me, that's what's going to make Yoshida's transition to the MLB a lot smoother than we've seen with other players. Um, I'm trying to think of some other, but like ha Young Kim himself had a tough year when he first came into Major League Baseball, and it was because of that adoption period. But adaption adaption adapting period something like that either way i think i think we'll see less of a um less of a uh less of a, a, a sort of shift in his statistics as you would see in someone else jack but yes there will be an ad adapting period yes okay Okay, AR, you're saying the Red Sox are gonna win under 60 games. What was the what was the Oakland Athletics? The Oakland Athletics won 60 games last year. The Oakland Athletics are quite literally. We're, we joke that this is a triple A team. The Oakland Athletics were look at quite literally a triple a team and they won 60 games this year last year to say that the red sox are going to win less games than the 2022 oakland athletics is just quite simply not true it's not a thing right i can understand how it's a bit of an exaggeration but to legitimately say that the red sox are going to lose 102 plus games is just not a thing we have too much talent on this team, regardless of whether or not you want to admit it. You've got Rafael Devers, you've got Kike Hernandez, you've got budding superstar Tristan Costas, you've got um, Masataka Yoshida, who is one of the best hitters in Japan, is coming over to be one of the better hitters in baseball. You can have a little bit of faith in your team. You've got Kenley Jansen, you finally have a closer. You've brought in Chris Martin, Joely Rodriguez, who are both guys who throw a ton of strikes, which the Red Sox lacked last year. And yes, our starting pitching does have some question marks for sure. But if everything goes right with the rotation, you're talking about Chris Sale, you're talking about Corey Kluber, who is a solid pitcher, regardless of whether or not you think it's a bargain bin option, regardless of whether or not you think he's old and washed up, he was a solid pitcher last year. You've got Brian Bale, who has been who was fantastic for the last half of his career. 
half of his first season debut. In his last five games, he had under a two ERA. He's coming into what could possibly be his first full MLB season, and he's working with Pedro Martinez in the offseason. You have Garrett Whitlock, who maybe you guys don't think is going to be a good starting pitcher, and that's fine based on what you've seen, but uh, remember, he was also battling through injuries, and you also have to remember, too, that a lot of his games he had under a two ERA as a starting pitcher as well. He only played in nine games, which makes the two starts where he had over over five runs scored inflate his ERA on top of that too his win loss record is because the Red Sox scored on average less than two runs a game when Garrett Whitlock was a starting pitcher so you've got Garrett Whitlock who was a monster who in the bullpen who's coming into the rotation on a fully healthy year after a full month of offseason prep and then finally you've got either Nick Pavetta James Paxson or Tanner Houck you've got a deep rotation now so yes there are a lot of question marks in the rotation but there's also a chance they're really really good all of that combined is to say, to say that you think the athletics, the 2022 Oakland athletics, who quite literally had possums running on the field and only two guys who were in contention for any sort of all-star spot, for any sort of awards, or even really average major league players, is kind of asinine. I'm not going to lie to you, AR. <sighs> Anyways, yeah, T said they the the uh, the Yankees have brought in some good some good help. Yeah, Craig, I wouldn't mind that either. I really wouldn't mind Adam Duvall. They could really use a righty or switch hitting center fielder with some pop. You know, it comes to mind. The Athletics had a decent rotation last year. Oh, brother. Um, yeah, they did have a fairly decent rotation, but they also traded Frankie Montas. Pete Black or Paul Blackburn was really only good at home and it's kind of because he was uh, Oakland Athletics a very pitcher friendly ballpark he wasn't very good outside of it you saw Frankie Montas leave and then go outside of it so so it wasn't really good <laughs> I could understand AR I could understand if you said if you said hey I think the Red Sox are gonna have a losing record okay fine look I'm not gonna argue that there is a chance that they end up with a losing record again but under 60 games is is insulting. We need Chris Taylor. I think Chris Taylor went somewhere else. Is there a possibility that exists that Shohei could be traded for by the Red Sox? I don't think so. Meyer, Bayo, Hauk, and Duran for Tatis. That would be an insane trade. Um, and AR, I'm not, I'm not trying to single you out, man. You're just the one who's been bringing it up a lot. I, I, you know, I just, there's, there's a difference between being, uh, being negative about this team, which you can be, you're allowed to be negative about the Boston Red Sox. You are allowed to be, um, you, you're allowed to be negative about this Red Sox team because, because, you know, it, it it's been a rough off season, but there's a difference between being a negative and just outright wanting the team to fail because it proves a narrative. Yeah, Robbie, I agree. Red Sox defense is iffy and that'll tax the pitching staff. Yeah, I think I think you really need a defensive forward shortstop or second baseman. Or or a defensive forward center fielder. Right now, Adam Duvall is looking really, really good. Rosario from Cleveland is still a possibility. He's going to be a free agent after next season. That's the problem, though. He's a rental, right? And I don't know if it's worth the Red Sox time as a rental. 
Because, I mean, realistically, even if everything goes perfectly right with this Red Sox team, it's going to be so hard to get into the playoffs, let alone win in the playoffs. Mm. Trade for Santander and Mateo. Santander would be unbelievable. Trading for Anthony Santander. Although, can he play shortstop? Ah, crap. I clicked on Anthony Bonda. I don't even know who that is. Uh, oh, no. Santander. Why did I think Santander was a third baseman? Did he play third base this year? No, he didn't. He's not very good defensively. So, unless you want to stick. I mean, offensively, he's fantastic. I think he'd be great. 117 OPS plus. 240 batting average. 33 home runs. Could be a ton of fun to get Santander here, Adrian. I, I would be interested in that. If Story recovers well, if the rotation works out, if Verdugo performs, and if Yoshida hits the ground running, then there's still a chance. The third wild card spot has changed Major League Baseball. I agree, Jack. Um, I just think that's a lot to bank on happening. I, I could see two of those three things happening, but not all of them. And the two most likely, in my opinion, would be the rotation, uh, would be Verdugo performing and Yoshida hitting the ground running. Um, let's see. We need to get Rojas from the Marlins. Logan, I so sorry to tell you that Rojas is now a Los Angeles Dodger. Who comes to mind? Switch hitting center fielder with some pop. Uh, I'll let you know. There's one person that comes to mind. It is, um, Brian Reynolds. B -b -b Brian Reynolds. Although, the last thing I heard about Brian Reynolds was that he had. I'm, lo I'm looking to see if there's any news about him. Yeah, here you go. This is what the latest is on, on uh, Brian Reynolds here. Interesting. Very interesting. So, I don't know if... I, Brian Reynolds might not be available in a couple of days. I could see the Rangers making a huge push for him. I wouldn't mind a Dolis Garcia uh, from the Rangers... I would, I would actually love to get a Dolis Garcia. This guy who's going to strike out a lot. But he would be great in this Red Sox lineup. I don't know where you'd fit him. 113 OPS plus. 250 average. Again, he's going to strike out a lot. But 27 home runs and 101 RBIs. That could be a ton of fun. I don't know what he's... How's he doing on the field? He's really good in right field. Not great in center field, though. I'll, I'll give him that. But one defensive run saved. Above average. I would love I would love Adolis Garcia. Love, love, love Adolis Garcia. Do you think Devers can finish in the top five in MVP voting? Yeah, definitely. I think he could 100%. Yeah, I saw that, Dylan. Um... My fear is they are going to end up having a decent season in front office, seeing we don't need big names and not make competitive offers again. I don't think so. I think I think they realize with Devers and players like that that they uh, they need they need to thump. They need to make some thumps. Best second offer for Brian Reynolds is superstar Ryan Brazier and a bowl of clam chowder. <laughs> Assuming Red Sox are not legit contenders for the division, who do you got winning the, the East this year? I would go with the Blue Blue Jays seem like clear favorites. They were clear favorites last year. They still can't figure out how to how to how to you know put together a fully winning season, but
Adrian, brother, I wish I understood Spanish, man. I'm so bad at Spanish. Hold on. I'm going to translate your. T- I'm going to translate it. Uh, bring it here. Hold on, Adrian. I'll leave it. I'll even translate back into Spanish for you and, and say it for you because I feel so bad. I don't know. Dominican Republic. I appreciate you, Adrian. Thank you so much, man. I, it means a lot to me when, when when you know people from so far away reach out to that because it's it's really cool. It's a cool thing. But let me let me say that in Spanish. Let me say that in Spanish. Okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna make myself sound ridiculous, I think. Soy consciente de que amo a la República Dominicana. How's that chat? Was that was that bad? I, I am learning Spanish, chat. I, I'm about a hundred days into Duolingo. It's been good so far. What are your thoughts on Rugi Odor? Uh, I know the Ks are atrocious, but he's got some pop in the bat. Could be solid depth at a minor league level. Yeah, he wouldn't be bad at a minor league level. Do you think the Rangers make the playoffs this year since they're making many good moves? It's going to be hard for the Rangers to make the to make the. Uh, it's going to be it's going to be so hard for the Rangers to make the uh, to make the playoffs with just who's ahead of them. Problem is Duvall is it would mean trading Verdugo, who in my opinion, with no shift, will have a great year in 2023. I could see it. We're a bottom five team in the AL. Oh, AR, here we go. I'll give you bottom ten AR. That's 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 the best I will do. Not even. How many teams are in the AL? There are 30 teams in baseball. 15. I mean, you gotta think, right? Right off the bat, you've got the Royals who are gonna be worse. You've got the Athletics who are going to be worse. Um, the Ra- the uh, the race of such a good pitching machine. Um, what's going on, Houston? Um, athletics, Royals. That whole like division with the Royals is going to be tough. Why can I not remember any teams right now in the AL? I think the Angels will end up with a worse record. Um, uh, Tigers will end up with a worse record. Angels will be good. They're never good, man. Um, yeah, the Tigers and the Royals are a definite. Oakland Athletics are a definite. I, I still think the Angels are a definite. Uh, maybe you're right. Maybe they will be a bottom five team. I don't know. The Chicago White Sox, I don't think will be super good this year. They haven't really done a lot except for getting Ben and Cleveland's going to be good. Love me some Red Sox talk, and you've come to the right place, my man. We're better than most of the AL Central, but we're in a much better division. Yeah, I would say I would say we're going to end up better than three of the five AL Central teams. I think the Guardians have a really good year. Um, honestly, the Twins, yeah, they brought back Carlos Correa, but is Buxing going to be able to stay healthy? The rotation's still not great. They don't have a very good catcher. He got DFA'd. Yeah, I don't know. I hope you won't be forgetting the. Uh, I didn't say I didn't say the Rangers are going to be bad, brother. Look at the Angels lineup on Fangraphs. I get it; they have a decent lineup, but they had a decent lineup last year and they ended up up below five hundred. Um, will it be worth it for a team to trade for Otani if there's a contender considering he is most likely to leave wherever he goes? The Hall will be crazy. If a team really wants to make a push, maybe. 
Maybe, but I don't know. I, I could, you know, the Angels might just want too much. All right, the Twins do have Vasquez. Seattle are going to be the class of the American League. Yeah, you're right. Do the Red Sox finish above 500 in 2023? Uh, I could see them getting like 85 wins. What's that? 80. So that's what? Seven games above? No, five games above 500. Six games above 500. I could see that. That's realistic for the Red Sox right now. And again, the offseason is over, isn't over. They could they could go out there. They could make a trade. They could sign a Glacius. They could make a trade, um, and and really really kind of bolster things up here. But yeah, I could see I could see a couple games over five hundred. Which which again, if you're in any other division, eighty five wins. We're talking about sneaking in somewhere. But Seattle's a team. I could see Seattle finishing first in that division. Eight games above. There you go. Eight games above 500. Which again, how many, um, how many wins did, did, uh, does it tell me the statistics? No, it doesn't. Um, I'm just looking to see who won the Central Division. Had 92 games. So the Guardians had 92 games. They had a really good year. But after that, 81 and 81 was second best. You know, so it's like if we were in any other division here, like like the Orioles last year were second in the Central Division. Our second place, the Blue Jays, are leading the division. So it's, you know, it's, it's all dependent on that. All right, hold on, Adrian. I'm gonna try and I'm gonna try and say some stuff that I've said. I, I, you know, I would never say this to 84 people in public, <laughs> but here I am trying to speak Spanish, something I I'm very bad at. Um, <clears throat> I don't know what watching is in Spanish, to watch. But I do know, uh, uh, gracias, mi amigo, uh, por something me channel something like that I- i'm working on it adrian come back in like six months and we can have full conversations i promise i really am working on it world series mets versus houston that's an interesting one yeah joe that's that's the biggest thing mira ver oh boy The new schedule will, will help with less head-to-head AL East. Yeah, it definitely would. Will. Me dies. Look. Uh, yeah, I, I'm working on it. I'm working on it, Adrian. I promise. They were going to finish above Baltimore. <sighs> the problem with Baltimore, they have a very good, uh, they have a very good core the problem is, though, is that the core is all, like, fielders, right? They have Grayson Rodriguez, who's kind of a question mark. DJ Hall, is that his name? Who's the other pitcher who's a question mark? So we'll see. Appreciate the encouragement, Jack. <laughs> por, por ver. Gracias, mi amigo, por ver. Me channel. See Jack. Uh, see Eric. You've you've built up yourself a reputation on this channel where I don't entirely trust. Uh, I, I don't entirely trust saying what you what you write here uh, uh, in Spanish in another language out loud. <laughs> I could see the Yankees and all New York World Series, which would be sad. Oh, man, I would hate that. Bedtime for teachers, Corbin. Appreciate it, Robbie. Thanks for stopping by, man. I'll talk to you soon. Um, 
The National League is much tougher road than the American League to the World Series. Yeah, right now for sure. World Series, San Diego, Houston. Hmm. Hmm. Bills versus Houston. Or, sorry. Padres versus Houston. I could see that. I don't know. I don't know, AR. I'm tired of fighting about this with you. We'll, we'll see. I still want to get... Oh, I just saw this. This is a while ago. I lost it. Someone talked about Framel Reyes. I thought he got picked up. Maybe not. Maybe he didn't get picked up. I don't know. I simply do not know, Chad. It seems like a lot of you guys don't want an outfielder, which is interesting. Astros Braves World Series. Okay. This one is. I am studying. I I am. Six years studying Spanish in. Res, Resquila. I don't know. Something like that. Um, I just want a player who won't fall apart. Yeah. Yeah, it's... it's At the end of the day, the whole Trevor Story thing sucks, man. I was so excited to watch Trevor Story play a full season with this Red Sox team. Really, really get into it and watch him, uh, you know, prove everybody wrong. I just want Almonte back. <laughs> who did Almonte get picked up by? I forget. Yeah, the Diamondbacks are still interested in trading another outfielder. I know. R.I.P. Almonte on this channel. Chad, we got to figure out also, we got to figure out what we want for um, uh, emotes this year. Because right now, right now we have this emote and this emote. One's unfortunate, one's really good that we need to replace. Yes, he did. That's right. Maybe he did. I don't know. Was it the Mets or Japan? Renfro back, uh, I'm I'm kind of good, man. I'm okay with Renfro, and the reason I'm okay with Renfro, yeah, Jack, we gotta figure out we gotta figure out what we're gonna do with the eleven and the two, because obviously Devers got paid, Xander really unfortunately did not. We might even need another. We got the story bomb in there, but probably gonna need to get rid of that one for the 2023 season. At least we got Verdugo and the K are still going strong. <laughs> I was close, Kenneth. I was close. Red Sox should sign. Oh, Evans Evans leaving us in suspense. But yeah, Chad, we'll vote on that. We'll vote on that before. Pull for Devers of the trade deadline. Ah, oh, come on, Eric. Don't do this to me. They're not trading Devers at the trade deadline. They're not gonna trade Devers. You don't give that much money to someone just to trade him at the trade deadline. Cut it out. Um, oh man, chat. There's just unfortunately the the unfortunate part with all of this is that there's just not. There's just there's not a lot of solutions to this problem. What just happened? Something happened. What happened, chat? I just missed it. Oh, Carlos, thank you for subscribing, my man. I appreciate you. There's something wrong with the Renfro. He can't be... Yeah, that's my biggest problem with the Renfro is, is why would... Um, why would... If he, make, if he is that productive of a season, why are teams trading him so much? Hey, Lucy. I would like for the Red Sox to trade for Brian Reynolds. <laughs> I would like for that to happen, but, but 
that's probably not going to happen. Um, I, you know, there's some Diamondback players I wouldn't mind seeing. You sign a Renfro problem in the clubhouse is the only thing I could say. Whitlock, Bayo, Yoshida could all learn emojis. I'd like to get another Rafi, Rafi emoji in here. So we'll figure that one out too. Maybe we'll replace the Rafi emoji with something else and then we'll replace um replace Xander with either Yoshida, Whitlock, or Bayo here. Yeah, AR, I'm not gonna comment on that one, man. I, you know that's that's a huge accusation to make about someone. Um, so without any any proof besides just someone on Reddit said it, you know that's not really something I'm gonna get into. Devers and Bogarts become a Padres match. We set and we get Machado in return. I am all set with that, man. We are we're gonna have Rafi. See, Eric, these no longer affect me because we have Rafi for the next. I think the Red Sox are better than we think. Yeah, I, I would say yes. I would say the Red Sox are better than what most people think, correct? It's just it's just a lot of the big things that happened this offseason were negative. That's the problem, Andrew. So everything going into the regular season is going to seem negative. He's close to someone that works at the Brewers. Yeah, but here, look. I can do the same thing. Right? There we go. That's my problem, right? Is I could I could put that on Reddit and people be like, oh, maybe Kike only wears red so or blue socks, you know? Should we go for Kim? I would love to go for Kim. They are going for Kim. The Padres won a lot though. The Padres won a lot, a lot, a lot. Plug in Meyer in spring training. There's no shift. Who cares about offense in the spring? No. Yeah. Maybe, maybe once or twice in spring training, but that's, I mean, that's a lot, man. Blue Sox, I'm outraged. Trade them. Thank God we paid Devers. If we didn't, it was the 2004 free agency would have had a heart attack. Yeah. If we went another year where after every big game, he was like, uh, reporters, someone would ask, oh, do you, uh, um, Reporters would ask, you know, are you expecting to do this again in the Red Sox uniform? You know, I would have, I would have gone nuts with with Xander too. Oh man, I, after the year with Xander, but I only see him in White Sox. See, uh -huh, yeah, see, Greg Allen on a minor league deal. Yeah, I saw that. I've heard he doesn't wear socks at all. But are you close with the team? That's the question. If the Padres want a lot for Kim, I want more than just Kim in return. Yeah, that that too true. He wears white socks over the blue socks to hide them. See, there we go. Um, yes, yeah, so the Kim thing, the Kim thing is really frustrating because that would have been, in my opinion, that is the perfect combination. That's exactly who we need on this team, but it's just it doesn't look like it's gonna happen. Uh, I'm listen. I'm I'm just reading. I'm reading articles right now, chat about the Red Sox could have avoided a major problem with Trevor's story, but uh, I just don't. I don't know. Can I see Meyer coming up 2024, 2025? Um, I think the very very earliest you're gonna see Marcelo Meyer is at in September of 2024. That's it. But that I mean that's that's very 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 early. Realistically, you're probably not seeing Marcelo Meyer until mid 2025. Yeah, uh, Marcelo Meyer. For those of you who don't know or, or don't really pay attention to my league stuff, because to be honest with you, before I started this channel, this is also a very creepy thing for me to have pop up there for you. Sorry, um, I didn't pay a ton of ten, uh, attention to our minor league players either. Man, it's wild that Marcel Meyer is four years older than me. Or younger than me. That never used to happen, chat. Um, 
Yeah, so he, he, he the the highest he's played is is single A. So at the bare minimum, he's got to get to double A. Which which I mean that's at the bare minimum, and then you need experience in double A. So I don't know where he starts off this year. I would assume it would be single A because he only got he only got twenty five games in, in single A. High high single A. Sorry. Whereas he had 60 games in low A. So I would assume they give him a half year in double A or single A, a half year in double A. And then next year they do double A. And then 2025, if he's ready, go for it. I agree with you, Jack. Yeah. Alberto Mondes is the stop gap gap. It could be possible. The problem with Alberto Mondes is he's never he's only played one legitimately full MLB season. And that's the problem. Um hello from Vegas. What's up uh, Peter? Welcome in, man. Uh, I think Joey Wendell's off the table now. Rojas per sources had a minor issue pop up recently after undergoing wrist surgery back in October. He'll need a procedure on it from what I understand. But it didn't hold up the deal with the Dodgers. Interesting. Well, maybe we dodged a bullet. Um, what do you think about Heim Bloom long short term plan, if any? Uh, I'm kind of you know you know right now I'm kind of dead in the middle for Heim Bloom. I'd say I'm leaning more towards cautiously optimistic. See you later, Ethan. Thanks for coming by, man. Appreciate it. If he rakes, he'll be up July 2024. No, Alex, that's too early. Um, I'm cautiously optimistic about what Heim's doing right now. That's what I'll say. I think a lot of it... Um, I you know, I think uh, he's had some good, really good moves. He's had some really bad moves. And so he's kind of in the middle for, I would say, a majority of baseball fans. Long term, I can see what he's trying to do. Short term, I have no idea what he's trying to do. And that's my problem is if you were the Cincinnati Royals and Heim Bloom was building up your minor league system and you looked really good in 2025, 2026, it's like, all right, yes, this is what we needed. We weren't going to be good right now. We can't afford to hang out with the big dogs. Let's build it up. But you're the Boston Red Sox trying to do what Heimblum's trying to do. It doesn't look good because of how much we are paying to enjoy the product. And so it's sort of like a back and forth with me on Heim Bloom. I would say for the most part I lean slightly optimistic about Heim Bloom, but I'm kind of mm, kind of teetering that line pretty well. And I think, you know, that's kind of where most people should be is 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 right in the middle. I no, I agree with uh, AR. I I know I know this isn't something you're making up. I understand you saw it, but I'm just saying I don't, I don't tend to believe it unless there's firm solid evidence besides someone on Reddit. Eric, you commented on a video the other day that you were now negative about Bloom. Was there ever a time you were positive about Heim Bloom? I think people are understating Chris Sale. I think he's going to come back on fire and everyone's going to eat their words. Yes, sir. Do you think Bloom takes a serious shot at Otani next year? I think we're in, we're interested. I don't think we're that involved, no. Red Sox are reportedly negotiating with Jose Iglesias. Yeah, I saw that. Um. Yeah, I mean, not shocking at all. I wouldn't be shocked if he came back. What, is, what did Lou Marloni say? Yeah. So. Um, how long does after the rookie trade? So, uh, so you were, you were positive about Heim Bloom for about what? 30 seconds. <laughs> um, how long does Bloom's contract go for anyway? I believe it's through the 2024 season. I feel like I've missed so many. We've missed so many chances in the past year to build up a big winner. Yeah. Kind of, kind of, kind of, kind of, I say you're on the right path of that. Yeah.
You going to Winter Weekend? I am. I will be at Winter Weekend, for those of you wondering. Uh, if tomorrow I was named the GM of the Boston Red Sox, to make us a contender this year, oh, man, that's a tough question. I, I don't know if there's a lot to do. Um. It's it's a tough it's a tough ask to figure out what I would do immediately if I was the GM because the problem is do I believe that this team can truly be competitive this year? I think I make a trade. I think I make a trade for a starting pitcher. And I think I figure out a way to get Ha Seung Kim from the Padres. I think those are the two things that I do. Because even if we're not competitive this year, if you go out and you get a you get a Edward Cabrera and Ha Seung Kim, then yeah. I think uh I think you're set up not not only to be a winning team, maybe not a fully competitive playoff team this year, but a winning team this year. And once Trevor Story gets back, you know, once you get into the 2024 offseason, some of these minor league guys really improve and they start to become, you know, guys on the horizon. Maybe Tristan Casas comes up. Then you sort of get in a competitive 2024. Verdugo is about to pop off too this season. Uh, yeah, I don't know if Verdugo will be powerful this season, but I think he'll have a good year. Here's an interesting thing. Heim must have a lot of confidence that his job is secure in order to focus so heavily on youth development. Yeah, I mean, he would—he must have to be. You're right. They're going to spend crazy next year? Uh, I don't know. See you later, Wolf Knights. Thanks for stopping by, man. Appreciate it. <laughs> Corbin, do you think rich people will trust you with money? No. <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> I do not know. Um, yeah, I, I think you're right, Jack. Competitive in 2023, I don't think it can be done. You'd have to trade every prospect, yeah. I think I think before Trevor Story got hurt, all you really needed, you didn't really need to make the starting pitching trade. would have been nice, but you didn't need to make the starting pitching trade. Now that, you're, um, now that you don't have Trevor Story... You're not you're not one big trade away. You're two, three, and and you're right. You'd have to trade a lot of the prospects. There is not that much negativity with Theo Epstein, even with a Nomar trade. Uh, yeah, yeah, but Epstein also uh, Theo Epstein brought in Manny, right? Theo Epstein brought in Manny. So you have that, right? You bring in Schilling. You bring in... Um, did you bring in... Pe did he bring in Pedro? I don't remember. But either way, right? The UFC scene had a lot of really good moves. Himes had really good moves and then some really bad moves. David Ortiz becomes Red Sox general manager. I don't know if... I don't know if David Ortiz would be a good general manager, honestly. <laughs> I don't know if David Ortiz would be a good general manager. Um, trade story? No. No, there's no, there's no point. Dan Duquette brought in Manny. I thought so. Okay. Theo brought in Ortiz. All right, I flip flopped him. Did anyone prefer the Dombrowski over the Blue Mare? I know I did. It's just you know. If Dombrowski were here right now, we'd probably be hating on Dombrowski too because a lot of the reason, the reason why Xander Bogarts is not on this team right now, not on this team right now, 
is because Dave Dombrowski gave him a contract that allowed him to opt out after the 2022 season. If you have another GM in there and you have them in there making a longer term deal, we don't have to worry about any of this because if Trevor's story goes down and that money would have probably went to Xander Bogarts A, but B, if we did end up with Trevor's story and he did go down, now you're only really worrying about second base, which you've got Kike, you've got Story, you've got Emmanuel Valdez, you probably have Jeter Downs at some point, right? So, so with the Dombrowski era, you know, you're talking about you're talking about reasons why this team was so cautious about giving pitchers big deals. Chris Sale, who signed that deal? Dave Dombrowski, right? It, there's so many. Yes, Dave Dombrowski did a lot of things. Well, and he won a World Series, but it's not built for long-term success, and that's the problem because now you have Heim Bloom, who in 2020 clean was cleaning up the mess that the mess that Dave Dombrowski made. And then 2021, you make a lot of good small moves and that's great. And it works out. Then 2022, you're dealing with the Xander Bogart stuff. You're dealing with all this stuff. And to say that the Dave Dombrowski era was better than uh, Heim Bloom, right now it was because of the World Series. But the long-term effects are still happening to this team. And that's something that, uh, you know, So, I, you know, it's a toss-up for me right now. That's all I say. Opt-outs are killing baseball more than crazy dollar figures. I agree with that. What about Trey from Montessi or someone like uh, Mikel Garcia, number five Royals? Uh, I don't know. Yeah, maybe we go after prospects. I think they need someone who can play now, though. I agree, Andrew. I think I think Chris Sale's gonna have a good season. Dombrowski is the king of big moves and big contracts for short term success. Yes. Hope to see you at winter weekend. Yeah, man. If you find me, come say hi. I'd love to talk to some of you guys. So it's not that it, it and it's not that I'm trying to crap on Dave Dombrowski either. Because because he's great at what he does. He wins World Series and then he moves on to another team. He's a World Series bringer, but he's not a long-term success builder. And so they're they're good at different things. Heim Bloom's good at long-term success, which I, I, I understand. People are going to fight me on and people are going to say, where's the long-term success? We finished last place in two of the three years that he's been here. And fine, 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 fine. But look at our farm system. Look at the small moves that he's making, the small stuff that he's doing, right? And you can kind of see, okay, you know, we're not fantastic right now, but hey, look at look at what we could be if we keep going down this path. So I don't know. It's kind of you know I'm kind of a mix. I, again, I'm not I'm not big on I'm not big on Heim. I'm I'm you know. <sighs> I don't know, chat. Just my opinion. I think I think they're both they they both have their positives. I think that's also true, Jack. I think you know you have the rest of this off season. He has the rest of this off season to figure something out. He's got you know this entire season to figure something out. So, well, the questions this show is perfect timing. I know I didn't even mean for this show to be perfect timing. Andrew, my man. Thank you so much for the 199 donation. I appreciate you. Thank you very much. Um, your your thing should pop up on screen any minute now. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see it. There it is. Thank you. Thank you so much, Andrew. Can we get some claps in the chat for Andrew? Can we get some claps in the chat for Andrew? Thank you, Andrew, for your $199 donation. I appreciate it. Cassis and Bay were both Dombrowski pickups, weren't they? Yeah, no, they were. And I'm not saying, look, I'm not saying that. Um, I 
Uh, you got to give credit to Dombrowski, too, for 2016-2017. Yeah, but 2016, you also had Poppy, who was a different player, uh, who, who was a big part of that. You, you had different pieces. Every general manager has different pieces from different teams, right? So, uh, yes, Eamon, I agree, with, I agree with you there. I agree. But at the same time, too, a lot of that had to do with other uh, who's who's the GM before dude Dombrowski I'm gonna go nuts but either way you have deals on there so I, I don't know you know I I see what you're talking about but yeah what was the deal with the Padres about w- what deal I don't think they had a deal It's unbelievable how many players they've DFA'd this offseason. It has to be a record. I know. Ugh, man. It feels like such a waste. Ben Charrington. Thank you, Eamon. I, for some reason, I forgot that. But, um, it, you know, there, there were a couple players on that team. I'm trying to remember the 2016 or 2017 rotation. But either way, right, you had those players. Oh, we got another. We got another something incoming. I don't know what it is, Chad. I just heard the notification. I'm excited to see what it is. Um, but you know, either way, Andrew Sarles, thank you for subscribing, my guy. I hope I pronounced your name right. Yes, I did see that. Yes. Their backup shortstop. Oh, Ha Seung Kim. Yeah, they have, uh, they, they want what they want is they want how here, I'll put this up again. Again, follow Griffin on Twitter if you haven't already. Um, here. Um, he, he has a lot of you know insider information on what's going on with the Red Sox, which is great. I did? Wow. Look at me. Proud of myself. I'm not very good with names, so I'm glad I got that right. Ask Eamon. <laughs> Um, source, the Red Sox are pursuing Padres Haseon Kim to potentially stopgap the infield position. He's been in numerous trade rumors, um, are being added to the block by San Diego in December, 2022. According to one conversation, the Padres want a package, including Hauk plus three prospects. Um, that's a lot. I mean, that's a ton. Okay, Gorge. So you haven't liked, you didn't like the Whitlock. You didn't like the Whitlock move. Um, you didn't like the, uh, you didn't like the Schwarber trade. You didn't like bringing in Renfro. You didn't like any of that because, because again, Heim has made good moves and, and listen, listen. Eamon's right. You know, Dombrowski did a, a, a ton for this organization. And again, I, I am I, I am kind of dead even. I, I like Dombrowski. I am in the camp of liking Dombrowski. I'm kind of dead even on Bloom. I just I just think it's unfair to, to fully compare their tenors here before Heim Blooms is done. That's all I want to say. Yeah, maybe maybe Heim can talk. Maybe Heim can talk uh, talk the Padres down. But man, that is a big. This is a big ask. A big big ask. Uh, yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if Verdugo gets traded either. But they need a. I don't know. I think he's become more vital now with Trevor Story out because. Before, you could say, yeah, yeah, we'll trade Doogie, we'll have uh, Kike in center, then we'll get a shortstop and a uh, and a right fielder. But now if you put Kike at shortstop, you know, it becomes a lot harder. So I don't know. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I agree, Eamon. I, I see exactly what you're saying, Eamon, and I agree with you. I do. I, I you know. Dombrowski did a lot of great things. He did a lot of great things to be ultra competitive in a division. Um, so I, I totally see what you're saying. Thanks, Milan. Have a good night, man. 
Ref Snyder could be a guy. Yeah. The Padres know the Red Sox are desperate. Yeah. The entire league knows the pod knows the Red Sox are desperate. Ten dollars from Salem Rage. Salem. What are you doing, you crazy guy? Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Thank you. Whoa, what are we doing? How many years has Bloom had versus Dombrowski keep up the great work? Well, Dombrowski's had what? Dabrowski had four years, three years, three years, and, and Bloom's had uh, Bloom's had three. So, um, yeah, I, I think again, but again, you know, their their philosophies are different. Bloom's is build to be long term stable and winning. Dombrowski's is win now and figure it out later. It just depends on which one you like, and it also depends on how well Heim can execute it, which so far so not great. <laughs> And then Andrew Sarles with again a five dollar super chat. Thank you so much. We've got a ton of cha- claps to give out throughout the uh, the chat right now. Uh, Verdugo is gonna pop off. I- I'm big on Verdugo. I agree. Red Sox just signed someone from the Yankees. I haven't gotten anything about that. Thank you again, both Salem and Andrew. I appreciate both of you. Um, I don't see anything on. Yeah, I don't. I don't see anything on any sort of. Uh... I don't see anything on, on a signing. So, Evan, I'll take a look at that after, maybe. But I don't see anything. Um, I say Andres and Duvall and then trade for Montessi and a starter and let the season ride. Man, that would be a pretty decent offseason. Having Dombrowski is expensive AF. Yeah, it is. And that that's the problem. How many World Cha- Series championships does Bloom have? Uh, that would be, if I did my math correctly, Salem, that would be uh, zero. Bloom also had to cope with the pandemic, which was the biggest crisis. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah, there's, there's, it's just, it's just, it's kind of comparing apples to oranges. Uh, maybe it is. Evan, are you talking about Greg Allen? Because they are different. I, I mean, it's apples to oranges. They both end up at the end of the day are the same thing, but you know, so uh, yeah, it's just, it's a tough one. It's a tough one because Bloom Bloom came in. You're right. 2020, 2020 was his first year. Yeah, 2020 was his first year. So he ends up with uh, you know you know he, he comes in directly dealing with the Mookie situation and then the, um, and then the pandemic and then 2021 you have a good year and then 2022 there's really no excuse for it other than injuries absolutely screwed you so uh you plan on seeing any games this season any in particular yeah i'll definitely go and see some games for sure uh yeah i'll probably get to like i want to go to 10 15 we'll see how it goes um as for any in particular i'd love to see the dodgers when they come to town i'd love to get tickets to that i don't know if i'll be able to get tickets to that but that would be absolutely beautiful um but yeah i'll definitely make it to at least at least at the bare minimum five but i want to get to 10 15 maybe if i'm crazy i'll do 20 weekend games those are my favorites yeah last year i went to a lot oh, i'm balling <laughs> No, I'm not balling. I'm just I'm I'm close enough to the stadium, Andrew. I'm close enough to the stadium where I can get uh I get cheap tickets day of and then just go into the city. So that's the only reason. <laughs> Sign Duval, baby. What's up, Mike? Yeah. I think I think Duval seems to make like a lot of sense. Um Want to go to the Padres and the Dodgers? Is are, are the Red Sox play? I mean, they are playing the Padres, but are they playing them at home? I don't think so, right? Ugh, printable. But it'll work. Hmm. 
Um, I'm just trying to see, Chad. I'm just trying to see what the... Dude, come on. Regular season. For someone who makes YouTube videos, Chad, I'm really bad with technology. Um, San Diego. Anyone see San Diego? Oh, yeah, I do. Not home. It's annoying. I'd love... I would have definitely gone to that for sure. The Woo Sox seem like a lot of fun. The Woo Sox are a lot of fun. That's another one I can I can get to fairly quickly. Um, Corbin, you have to see the Dodgers in LA. I would love to do that. I would love to, love to, love to do that. Have you been to the Woo Sox game? Yeah, I have been. Yeah, we saw the Greg Allen signing. Nothing crazy, but uh, something to get a little bit excited for, I guess. Brian Bale have a breakout year with Pedro working with him now during the offseason. I I think, yeah. I think I don't think it'll be because strictly. Um, I don't think it'll be because strictly he's working with Pedro Martinez. But, yeah, I think it'll have a good year. Trade for Javi Baez. I'd be kind of interested. It depends on what, what we get back here. We might get to face Rich Hill at the start of the season. That's right. Yeah, Rich Hill's probably their, what, number two starter right now. Connor Wong, Tristan Costas, Brian Bayo is a good crop of rookies. I would I would, I would, would kind of subtract Connor Wong for now, see, see, what he's, uh, see what he's got this year before we put him in the good crop. But, yeah, he's got, he's got some interesting oomph behind him. But, yeah, Tristan Costas and Brian Bayo are going to be excited to watch this year. I believe the Sox play the Dodgers at Fenway. Uh, yeah, they do. It's, uh, it's right down here. It's Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. So I'm going to try and get to that Friday game in August. That would be beautiful. Maybe by then, Chad, I'll be, we'll be big enough community here where I can work this full time and I won't have to worry about taking days off. That'd be nice. But we'll get there. For now, chat. Tom Brady should be the catcher. Hey, what's going on, Joe? Welcome in, man. You're kind of catching the end of the stream here. I'll probably only be on for another 10 minutes. Um, but yeah, spring training's only... Jesus, spring training's only a month away, right? It's like 40 days, 30 days, somewhere around there. Have they announced the 10-year anniversary game to honor the 2013 champions? I don't think so, no. Yeah, I don't I don't think they've I don't think they've done any any true like announcements on um I don't think they've done any announcements on like special games or anything. Yeah, I agree, T said. This 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 schedule is something I think all of us have been wanting for a very long time. I'm not sure if anyone's mentioned this yet, but I think Elvis Andres yeah, we've talked about it a little bit, Tim. I agree. I think Elvis Andres would be a decent stopgap. Door sheets. My man. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Got it. I got the announcement. Door sheets, man. Thank you so much for the $5 super chat. Can we get some claps in the chat for door sheets? Let's get some claps in the chat for door sheets, huh? Thank you, door sheets, for your generous $5 donation. I appreciate you so much. Thank you. Sorry if you talked about it before. Do you think Jose is worth it? Jose Iglesias at this point? Yeah, he's worth it. Yeah, there we go. Let's get some claps in the chat for door sheets, huh? I could I would see a trade with the Brewers. Um with the Brewers for Adamas, Yelich, and Woodruff. I agree that you previously said it shouldn't take much. It would take a lot. I never said it wouldn't take much, but yeah, that would be my ideal trade too. I'm banked tonight. Yeah, you guys have been ultra generous. This is insane. Thank you guys so much. This is this is incredible. Uh, thanks for keeping me entertained through my workout, my dude. Have a great evening. Yeah, you too, door sheets. Thanks for stopping by. And again, thank you for the $5 donation. I truly do appreciate it. Red Sox trade for Ryan McMahon. That'd be, I would love Ryan McMahon. I just like Ryan McMahon in general, but... come out for the D-backs games in May. I do if 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 genuinely, genuinely. If if this ever 
becomes my dream full job. Um, I will, I will take a straight tour of all the stadiums. I'll just bring my studio equipment with me and I'll just follow the Red Sox. It would be an absolute dream. Live stream. Just keep getting better. Been here a while. I'm glad you guys have liking it. Quick question. Should we retire the number two for Jerry Remy? Um, Oh, Chad, we just got clarification on. Uh, we just got clarification on the other three prospects that the Padres want. So the Padres want. Padres want Hauk. And they want. On top of that, they want Brian Maida and a combo of other 12 prospects plus Hauk. That's insane. That's an insane here. I'll pull this. I'll pull this up because I was just about to get off, but then our then our our he's now he's now everyone's baseball insider. If you want to follow him on Twitter, um, but he is he's one of my good friends now, and he is a he is normally a very loyal sub to this channel. Um, here you go. Oh wait, I'm an idiot. Here you go. This is this is ridiculous. I mean that's that is absurd. That is an absurd, absurd, absurd ask. See you later, Amon. Appreciate it. Yeah, and, and a combo of other top twelve prospects. But that has to be for Kim. No, that's just straight up. That's just straight up for Haseon Kim. Which is insane. I mean, that's just, that's way, way, way too much. You should have some quiet music in the background of your live stream. Uh, I could probably do that, actually. If you like, I mean, the only thing with the, with the music is I'd have to loop it and it just, it's just the same song over and over again. Super annoying. If I, if I had the ability to put in a playlist, I definitely would, but I don't want to get copy written by, uh, but I don't want to get copy written. So unfortunately you're just gonna have to listen to the sweet sound of my voice. <laughs> um, I wish I could don't know, but my card isn't connecting. Don't worry about it, guys. I, I truly, truly appreciate everyone who feels the need to donate to this channel. And it is greatly, greatly appreciated. And I would thank every single one of you. But don't feel as though you have to pay to watch the live stream. Obviously, if you want the emotes and you want to be a part of the secret society we call the bleachers, you can do that as well. You get emotes. It's, it's what, Jack? Two ninety nine a month. You get emotes. Sometimes we have a little bit of private conversations. Um, and I'm going to be introducing more into the members come the 2021 regular season. Um, so keep an eye out for that. But, yeah, don't feel the need to, to donate. It, it's okay. <laughs> yeah, sometimes trading is, uh, sometimes trading is the... Uh, is the wrong move, Joe, and, and in this case you might be right. Thank you for thank you for highlighting the highlighting the emotes, Jack. Yeah. So we're we're gonna be adding more emotes there. Um, we're gonna be adding some other fun things to the we're gonna be adding some other fun things to the membership this season. Meta or Hulk plus a prospect? No, it's Meta and Hulk. Uh, do the Padres think Kim is Juan Soto? <laughs> uh, man, that's hilarious. You truly deserve it, man. If there was one guy, it would be you. I appreciate that, Car. I really do. That means a lot. Thank you. Thank you. Trade for Jose Devers. It's all we wanted. It'd be kind of cool to have double Devers on this team. Who's better, Trout or Tom Brady? Career rise, Tom Brady. This is, I mean, I mean, this is, this is starting to make me mad. I keep looking at this chat. I'm getting more mad. I'm getting more mad.
get way more mad. Is Jose Jose Devers played in the majors yet? Nope. This is the guy you're talking about in the complex league? No. This isn't the guy you're talking about, right? Yeah, yeah, Caleb Ort's still on the team. Uh, Wesley. Maybe I'm missing something here. I'm looking right now. Really quick before I go, before I head out here. Ah, this is who we're talking about. He's in double A. Oops. He did get some MLB time in 2021 where he hit 244. Not terrible. Not great. $20, Peter. Oh, wait, crap. Ah, I missed the notification, Peter. I'm so sorry. No, everyone get some claps in the chat for Peter. Ah, oh, man. You're not going to get the celebration on screen. I appreciate it, Peter, though. Thank you so much, man. Have a good night, Peter. You too. Can we get some claps in the chat? That's insane. $20. Crazy, Peter. Crazy, crazy, crazy. Have a good night, Evan. Wow. Thank you so much, Peter. It means the world to me. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Sounds like Iglesias would solve a lot of problems. Go get him. I agree. And I'm like choking up. There's a piece of ice in my throat. I can feel it melting. It feels terrible. <clears throat> Trout's still insane. He's definitely still the best player of my generation. I don't know. The new generation, though. I don't know if he's the best player in baseball right now, though. Um, this feels like a good place to end it, chat. Peter, absolutely blowing the doors off it to end it. Although... Again, everyone who donated, you guys are all fantastic. Thank you so much. Um, I appreciate it. I, I truly do. Everyone who donated tonight, thank you so much. Regardless of whether or not it was $1, $20, every donation means so much to me. And I, I truly do appreciate every single one of you. Even the guys who, uh, everyone who didn't, it didn't donate to, I appreciate you as well. Just hanging out with me. Just hanging out talking socks. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Um, I do not live down the street from Fenway. I live fairly close, close enough where I can go to a game on a, on a dime. I'll say that. Um, but either way, thank you all so much for hanging out with me tonight. Again, we are going live for, we've been live for two hours and 45 minutes. That's crazy. You guys have hung out for so long with me. So thank you all so much for that. Thank you all again to everyone who donated in this stream. It truly does mean the world to me. All the subs, all the likes, everything. I appreciate you all. Um, I'll be back tomorrow with a video, probably on trades for Trevor's story, either that or Nesson. I'll figure it out. Um, if you haven't decided to hit that subscribe button yet, hit that subscribe button for me. We do this every other week. We talk Red Sox almost every single day. It's a no-brainer. Also, make sure, yeah, I think that's it. Thank you all very much for hanging out with me. 